The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual guests. What is going on, my Ghost Squad? Welcome to the Armed Citizen Podcast Live. This is episode number 334. We are live on YouTube, as always, streamed to over 150 countries worldwide. If you're out there in the live chat, go ahead and say something. We don't know that you're out there unless you do. If you would like to uh, text into the show, yes, you can text into the show. Utilize the Ghost Tactical Hotline presented by our good friends over at Wilder Tactical. That number is 530-364-4678. And go check out wildertactical.com. You guys know that they've got a lot of really cool gear, uh, some of the best duty belts, whatever you want to call them, uh, in the world are out there, and we've got a bunch of stuff from them. And so, yeah, go check out wildertactical.com. Um, this is the part where I typically tell you to go call the, the Veteran Crisis Hotline, but uh, what I'd like to start doing more often is talk a little about Walk the Talk America. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more information about Walk the Talk America, what they do, they are uh, an organization started about five years ago by Michael Sedini, and they're there to really bridge the gap between mental health and firearms and, and make it to where we can or they can no longer or we can no longer as a group say anytime that there is a tragedy with firearms saying well you know it's the mental health side of things and all that we want to be able to make sure helping people cut down that suicide by fire and the suicide rate in general especially that suicide by uh firearm and all of that and uh, and uh, all that if you are looking and you may think that you might have um, some mental health issues um go to wtta.org or walk the talk and they they do have free mental health screenings anonymous and all of that they also have a lot of resources over there more importantly guys if you're interested they do a great podcast every friday morning at 10 o'clock central 11 o'clock eastern roughly around those times every friday they do a great podcast over on their youtube channel walk the talk america and all of that um <laughs> uh, we do see out there totally not Wayne LaPierre uh, and we are glad that your suit fund is is uh, well funded um, and all that but no um, but yeah go check out Walk the Talk America their website is wtta.org or walkthetalkamerica.org if you want to go see them on uh, Instagram and all of that I think it's Walk the Talk US um, but Go check them out, guys. Great people. Great people doing a lot of great things and a lot of great um, uh, initiatives that they're working on right now. Uh, we are spotlighting, as always, United States Marine Corps. If you have any questions on what it takes to earn the title, United States Marines, see the website marines.com. And as always, we're a proud member of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Check out all your favorite Pro Gun, Pro 2A podcasts over at Self Defense Radio. Dot net. Let's get this off of my ugly mug. I am, uh, I tell you what, I, I am hurting. I, I, um, I was this close not doing a show. Um, so, uh, if, if I am mis talking, if I am sounding weird and all that, I am not high. I am just at this moment, I just very, very tired. Uh, my wife and everyone are in Okinawa. I did not sleep for about 48 hours straight. And it's kind of made me a little delirious. I finally got a few hours sleep this morning. They landed our time in Tokyo at 3 o'clock this morning. I stayed up uh, the night before. I had to take my wife and them uh, to the airport at 3 o'clock the previous morning. Um, landed in Tokyo at 3 o'clock this morning. Then had a couple hour layover. Then landed in Okinawa basically at about 9.30 hour time this morning. And uh, I slept. I got to bed about 3.30 or so and slept for about three or four hours. 
Um, needless to say, I am extremely tired. So um, I'm going to handle uh, this in the only way that I know how, and that is to allow my illustrious panel to do the heavy lifting for me tonight. Um, you know what they say: if if when you when you're if you're fighting something and you're just too tired to fight, let someone else fight for you. I'm letting my homies fight for me tonight. So uh, let's talk. Let's talk about these idiots and why they're joining me tonight. I don't know why, but uh, the merry band of idiots from the weirdest. Oh God, from the weirdest state in the in the nation, uh, the only state that has four letters and takes two freaking people to spell it out. From the weird state of Ohio, we have Chris from the seven four. What's up, homie? I'm Matria. Thanks for the invite. And. uh yeah, you definitely look tired. Oh, man, I am hurting. Um, and I was talking, my daughter had called, like, literally right before we went live. I guess she t- she got a few hours sleep and, uh, and all that. But, uh, you know, technology is so cool. Um, you know, there's a, it's kind of like, it's it's a Japanese version of, like, WhatsApp, where we're, we're a bunch of us in, in my wife's family and all that over in Okinawa are, are all in this big, huge family chat. But you can call from there. You can video call for as long as you have Wi-Fi. And so it's it's kind of cool that, like, literally, my daughter is literally around the world from me, and I can still video chat with her and all that. But yeah, she's tired. She's, she's got a few hours of sleep. I haven't talked to my wife um, since this morning. It was about four o'clock in the morning her time, which is probably oh maybe two o'clock, I guess, in the afternoon here. Um, and she was getting ready to maybe go to sleep. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. From Anderson Manufacturing, we've got our good friend Kyle. What's up, bro? Nothing much, Trey. Hey, you don't have to explain yourself being tired. Oh, Most God. Forgotten. You are the people's champ, goes. <laughs> wow. You are the people's champ. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you might have to watch last week's show if you guys forget the reference of the people's champ. But uh, I, I still think maybe get maybe should I get a belt? Yeah, I should get a belt. Who knows? It could already be in the works. Who oh, knows? you asshole! Yeah, don't 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 do that. Don't do that. But luckily for me, I'm such a small person. It, it can be like a little miniature belt, and I'd still, you know, it fits in your pocket just like me. So exactly, half uh, the material, half the price. It's all good. You know, it's all good. It's all good. Uh yeah. Everything good with Anderson? What's going on with you guys? Everything's great, man. Uh, still pumping out the front line. Still pumping out American-made parts and rifles. Yep. And handguns. Soon to be a bolt action. But uh, no, everything is great over here, Ghost. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, and, uh, bro. What a weird day with the uh, the barge crashing into. Uh, See, I, I I don't watch the news anymore, so I have no idea what's going on. Uh, what's going on? Oh man, we had a barge take out the uh, Keys Bridge today in Baltimore. Seven mile bridge. Yeah. Like seriously. Two, two- Dude, yeah, due to a a power um, issue, I guess. Holy cow! Anyone uh, they, dead? They're still searching for. I think it's twenty something people. Oh. Um, I guess they were able to get the alert out, a mayday out, uh, a little bit before to stop traffic, but there are still cars on the bridge. Yeah, that's uh, nuts. I hadn't. I mean, man, it's so apparently weird. that's going to have a huge impact. Um, oh, on shipping and exporting, and yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I hadn't heard that. I had to go and, and like I said, I don't, I haven't watched the news since 2018, so I'm usually the last thing person to hear about stuff because I have to hear it from like friends and all that. And then I had to go and find out and yeah, and all that, but I hadn't heard that. But then again, like, I yeah, it's been a weird three days, two days. So, um, man, I have to go find out about that. That's weird. Thanks for letting me know about that. Uh, standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona, such a fine sight to see. It's a ginger, my lord, and a flatbed Ford. 
wearing and and minor league hat that's the utter tuggers is that right no this is a eugene exploding whales the exploding whales yes yeah. yes yes from the gunners of america and fully loaded reviews we have john the ginger soulless bastard what's up homie what's up homie how's it going not much bro not right so yeah I, I, we were talking before i, I you know I've, I've got a bunch of my i you know i should have worn the other one um, I got a cool ass hat, a minor league hat. It's called the um, Amarillo Sod Poodles. Who doesn't like the old Sod Poodles? You know, uh, gray one. Um, I need to go and see if I can find me. I almost got one a couple months ago, but I didn't have the color that I wanted the right size. Let's see if it's back. But you know, the El Paso Chihuahuas, pretty awesome name. The Utter Tuggers, like you were talking about, that's pretty. It's pretty amazing. Uh, if you if you guys like just enjoy laughing, go check out some of the minor league um, names. It's amazing. You yeah, know, it's I just amazing. picked up this one the other day because it came yeah. back in stock, and I just ordered the uh, Blitzky or Blissy. I don't know. It, they're going by the the uh, Beach Chickens for one game this year, so I got Beach Chicken. Oh, the Biloxi. Biloxi, the Mississippi, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see beach chickens. So I picked that uh, one up. Too. I can't remember where it is. It's the best hat, and I, I and they, they're, they've been out of them for over a year. Um, but they have a it's, it's somewhere in California, and they do uh during the season they have Taco Tuesday, and on Tuesdays they wear like taco hats. And it's amazing. I cannot uh, let me find out real quick because uh, let's see here. M I L B taco hat. I think it's the in- Fresno, the Fresno yeah. tacos. Um, it's actually the Fresno Grizzlies, but on t- on Tuesdays they they wear taco hats. They have different colors and all that. Freaking awesome! I gotta find me a taco hat before too long. They're they're like they're always sold out. Uh, this one I've been trying to find for a long time. This is a a 1902 Cincinnati Reds hat. Uh, opening day is Thursday. Big baseball guy, big Reds fan. Got a chance this year, man. We got some talent, Kyle. We got some talent, man. It's gonna be a good year. My two teams are the Padres and the Reds. And typically, I hate saying this, but typically both my teams are mathematically eliminated, usually by July Fourth weekend. And um, they're that that bad, but this year uh, the Reds actually I think have a legitimate chance of winning the division. I don't think the Padres will win the division, but I think they have a legitimate chance of of making the wild card and, and going pretty deep, surprising a lot of teams. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, what's if up? only if only Pete Rose had an interpreter. Did you see that video he put out the other day? <laughs> it was beautiful. I heard someone say that the whole Shohei thing, uh, which is really weird because my wife's over in Japan right now, and it's insane over there what's going on. Um, you heard yeah, that. I saw, what's they, up? Have to cha- they have to change their lineup now because it can't be uh, Otani bets back-to-back. Mookie... Um, yeah, Mookie, unfortunately, is going to be involved in this just because it's a, an unfortunate last name. <laughs> but, yeah, I did see the Pete Rose video where it says, man, if I, in the 70s and 80s, if I had an interpreter, I'd be Scott for again. Like, yeah. He'd be in the Hall of Fame right now if he just had an interpreter. Just let um, him in. Just, just let, let him, him in. in. I, I, here's my thing with Pete. Like, he's my favorite player of all time. He's my hero. I wore 14 my entire career playing baseball. Um. He made some mistakes as a manager. Yep, he sure did. Um, ban him for life forever working in baseball again. Don't let him in the Hall of Fame as a manager. But as a player, the greatest hitter of all time, like, what the hell's wrong with you guys? Let the man in. Uh, anyways, so, yeah. Uh, two-way Tuesday, what's going on at GOA, bro? Well, we done it. We got Joe Biden to sign pro-gun legislation. Explain, so, sir. So for those of you who don't know, <laughs> um, 
if you were a veteran and you were going to the VA for financial assistance, you were put on a, a no sale of guns list through NICS, mm-hmm. which is really unconstitutional and has a lot to do. So we've been fighting this uh, fight for about 20 years now, and that's how long it takes to get things passed in the courts, unfortunately. But we have got it signed that they can no longer do that. They can no longer deny yeah. veterans their VA uh, benefits because their gun rights, if they have to go to the VA, which is something they earned in serving in our armed forces. So we got it passed that they can no longer put veterans on a list for going to the VA. I mean, we, with that bill alone, I guess 90% of the Marine Corps was lit, you know, taken out. So we're glad Marines can get guns again. I mean, era. <laughs> I'm not so sure that people want that to happen. I, I, I truly, um, they may not want it, ghost, but the people need that. To the happen. people need it. Yes. Yeah. Allergy. Speaking of which, yes. Um, yeah. No, I, I, that's great. Uh, it's a great thing. I tell you, speaking of the VA and veterans and all that, um, if you guys haven't heard of it before, I, I talk about it quite frequently, but. Um, it's called Team Never Quit Podcast. It's Marcus Latrell's podcast, who was Lone Survivor. Um, his twin brother, Morgan, uh, was a Navy SEAL as well and um, is now the congressman, one of the congressmen uh, in D.C. from the state of Texas. And the latest podcast that, that Marcus put out last week or whatever was with Morgan and Morgan came back, uh, back to the district and all that. And it's been a year since he's been in office and they go on for about an hour, hour and a half, whatever it was talking about his first year in Congress and all the things about the insides of how Washington works and what he had to learn and, uh, being on committees and working across the aisle with the Democrats and all of that. And all of the stuff that's kind of like how the sausage is made it was really fascinating. So if you ever get a chance to, and you're interested in that, you know, political nerd stuff like I am, um, go check out the YouTube channels called Team Never Quit or any of the podcast platforms at Team Never Quit. And it's one with Morgan uh, Latrell with Marcus talking about his first year as a, as a U.S. congressman. So pretty interesting, pretty interesting to, to listen to. I thought it was really cool. Um, everything going on okay? We're fully loaded? Yeah, everything's going great. We've got another video coming up. Unfortunately, uh, we're scrambling a little bit. The mics decided to overload mid-filming, so they sounded awful. So I've just picked That's up a awesome. set of just picked up a set of DJI or DJI's just because I was sick and tired of messing with cheap stuff. So we've got that going. Uh, we should have our video up on the Ross Martin here shortly. Just uh, fixing those audio issues. Luckily, we had backup audio that was running. So that should be up here shortly. And then I just met Artac for the first time over at uh, the gathering, which was fantastic. It was great meeting you, brother, in, in person. And got to say hi to Sarge and Obnoxious and Big Kid and Kyle from Gear Know How. So that was a fun event. Had 100 people come up to me and recognize me from the podcast, which was interesting. So... It was a good. It was a good event. Good. I had fun. Got to film uh, the next batch of episodes for the podcast with uh, John Level and Liberty Doll and Silencer Central was on that list, and we had the uh, new owner of Watchtower Firearms on. So that's even cooler too, because that's a whole new b- rebrand from if you know the old F one uh, Watchtower mm-hmm. Firearms is is uh, coming up from the ashes of the old F one. And then I got a great behind-the-scenes tour at PSA. So we got to walk through their rifle (laughs) manufacturing facility, which was eye-opening. I would imagine so, yeah. So it's it's cool uh, to be on a podcast, I guess. And now we're on our own channel, so go to Stay the Second Podcast on YouTube, and you can find the new YouTube channel for Stay the Second Podcast. Yep. Uh, Anybody else go to the gathering here? Um, I did not this year. I haven't been I in a couple see of years. Else. Only the cool people so, won apparently this year. Like, if you say so. Like Sarge and Obnoxious and you and and 
Oh, Steve was there too. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Cool kids table. Us <coughs> peons weren't weren't invited. It's all good now. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, from the great state of Texas, the uh, what were we, what were we gonna what were we gonna call? We weren't gonna call Clover the tactical virus, and what we're gonna call him that we're gonna call him something else now. Can't remember what that was. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember either. But it was something funny. I have a figure. But anyways, the tactical leprechaun himself. What's up, Clove? How are you, bud? I'm tired. I'm not as tired as you, but I'm tired. I don't want to hear your shit about being tired, bro. I'm just like 24 hours without sleep. Well, I'm more than that. But you're probably 50 or something at this point. Man. Now you're more than that. You're probably pushing 60. I, I, I did get a few hours. Uh, oh, that's right. The Texas gatekeeper. That's right, Kyle. Thank you. Uh, the gatekeeper the Texas of Texas. Gate. That sounds like a uh, that sounds like a villain on it in a Ghostbuster movie. Just say. Yeah, the it Texas does. Gatekeeper. The gatekeeper. Yeah. Uh, oh, Night Strike was at the gathering. Oh, I'm sorry All the I missed that. That's like you said. Jesus. Yeah. That's right. All, all of them. All the cool people. Hey, he got out of the basement. I'm surprised that he was allowed to leave the basement. Yeah, it's only like that out loud? it's only like ten minutes from his house. That's true. I forgot to say the gear know how guy or the gear report guys were there too. Everybody no. but TJ. I was gonna say no, they weren't. JJ yeah. and and uh, Jeff. How is how is one. JJ not there? He's only like a few hours from there. JJ Jeff was, was there. No, uh, Jose Juan. Uh, Jose Juan and Jeff were there. Oh, Jose Juan was there. Yeah. Yeah, Jose oh, Juan okay. and Jeff and then TJ. Oh, so AJ make... wasn't there and... Okay. TJ, TJ Allen, Allen. Toby, Chris. Oh, I bet you Toby was banned. Probably. I, mean, I would ban him, you know. Losing people's springs. And mud. In, in the mud because um, he wants to break down every gun and, yeah, God bless him. Uh, anyways, yeah. Uh, what's going on with you, Clove? Anything going on? Anything special? You've been printing your ass off with the 3D shit, haven't you? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've come yeah. a long way in a week or 10 days or about 10 days now, isn't it? So, yeah. I'm... Yeah, I've done made, uh, made two designs basically from scratch. Yeah. Uh, blog post up now. Go check that out. Uh, speaking of with... Uh, a little bit of 3D printing, a little bit of a uh, new toy that I picked up Saturday. Um, mm. Yeah, just go to the website or check the community tab. I, I put a link in there. So, folks, after after this is over, go check the community well, tab. And if you don't like reading, if you don't like reading, there is pictures. So just go look at the pictures. I know. Thank you for for us. Uh, yeah, Kyle and I are excited excited about having pictures. Man, that's great. Right. Uh, one day they'll get pop up pictures you know even or better click, uh, speaking of blogs yeah exactly um speaking of blogs kyle you put a blog out last week as well did yes, you know he did. He's got yes a uh we're working on a general purpose rifle build right yes now. you are so after you check out this and then go to clover tax blog so, and I'll go to manufacturer and finish off the so for what purpose does it General need a firearm. I'm just saying. Well, that's the thing with the general purpose rifle. I want it basically I want it to be a versatile rifle. Yeah. I want it to be capable of a lot of things. Uh be able to be carried for long periods of time without wearing you down. So lightweight, um, just just a var- variety of different checks in the boxes. Check the blog out to find out. Ooh. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. Speaking of and your, and your Anderson, God, I can't even speak. Andrew Anderson Manufacturing. You guys know that every Thursday, Saturday, and Monday over at our YouTube community tab, we have the Pony Polls. Let's go check them out. Uh, came out yesterday, got over a thousand votes. Uh, let's start out with this one. I'm gonna come out coming in hot. Which one? ACDC or Aerosmith? Uh, Chris, we'll start with you. I gotta go ACDC. I understand that. Uh, Kyle, ACDC or Aerosmith? I 
don't want to close my eyes. Oh, you're going Aerosmith. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Now, let me ask you this, because Aerosmith had like three different careers, right? They had the 70s oh. where they were um, huge. And then they had like the late 80s with Alicia, was Alicia Silverstone or whatever, that series of videos. And then they had the... Huh? Her and Liv. Yeah. And then you had the Armageddon. Then with, with that song came out, it was like, man, they had like three different careers, you know? Uh, what was your favorite era of Aerosmith, Kyle? I'm going to have to say 80s because that's what I've been most exposed to. But okay. I think, uh, I don't know. I, for me, it's easy. I just ACDC. Not saying they're bad, but I think yeah. Aerosmith is just a way better band in general. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Oh no, uh, yeah. Ginger! Back in the seventies and eighties, there were two bands: one from Britain and one from Boston. Aerosmith was a band with Steven Tyler at the helm. Uh, became really big in the mid seventies with Dream On and a couple different songs. Then ACDC came around in the late seventies, early eighties uh, from England. And went through a couple different lead singers and all that. So you might have to do your research. So I don't know if you know either one of these bands, John. But if you do, uh, Aerosmith or ACDC? Uh, Akadaka. There you go. You're going with the old uh, ACDC. What was that? The Electrical Currents or something like that? Is that what AC and DC Currents or something? Yes. I don't know. Yeah. But as the people in Australia say, Akadaka. Akadaka. There you go. Uh, Clover bitch. I mean, Clover tag. Yeah. Huh? What? Huh? ACDC or Aerosmith? I've always, well, I'll say always. So like way back in the day, this was what early mid eighties or something. I mm -hmm. remember the big deal, you know, especially like Tipper Gore. You remember all that? You remember D Snyder testifying in front of Congress? Oh yeah. MTV hit and it was Antichrist devil's children or whatever. Yeah. ACDC, oh, yeah. the big fuss. I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah, like ah, oh, killing me. Um, so Aerosmith is one of those that is almost like the most for me, and especially the 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 eighties nineties. Um, it's almost like the Motown of rock. It's like you know what I mean. It's like the you know you're the cruising with your chick, you know, type music or something. Um, it's not really for me. It's not really like rocking out music. Um, it doesn't have that, to be rocking out music. It just be, it's be music that, you enjoy. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. Well, well, I get you. But the the talking about the Armageddon soundtrack, um, I don't want to close my eyes. Is probably my least favorite song on that entire soundtrack. Yeah. Um, I'm throwing shade at Aerosmith, so obviously I'm going ACDC. Um. But I'm curious for those that said ACDC, um, Scott or Johnson? I, I, okay, so I'm going to say personally Aerosmith, but I'm going to caveat that by saying 70s Aerosmith. Like yeah. I like Dream On and, and, and Sweet uh, Emotions and all that stuff back in the 70s. Um, that was, I was, I am not a big Steven Tyler fan now. Uh, I'm not a big Aerosmith. I like some of their songs, but if, if, if I'm going like seventies, I'm definitely going to go Aerosmith. But if I go ACDC, I'm going the Johnson era. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. which I, I don't know if that's sacrilege for ACDC fans out there. I don't know, but, um, uh, like back in black, I mean, was that that was Johnson, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So to me, like of both the bands, if I had to say like the best album was Back in Black from ACDC of both those bands. Oh, amazing album. Yeah. But that was probably like the only album that I can really listen to for ACDC. So I mean, I'm not a wow. huge ACDC okay. fan or Aerosmith fan to begin with. Um, but Back in Black, I can listen to it had a lot of great songs. But I'm not a big, I can't listen to ACDC that much. So I'll pick 70s Aerosmith. But if you told me of either one of those bands, which album was the best, hands down, back in black. That's just me. Uh, Chris, John, uh, 
ACDC, which which singer do you prefer? Oh, definitely Brian. Back in Black was yeah. Uh, that album's amazing. Every song mm-hmm. on that album's good. Most of the other ones have a lot of throwaway songs on them, but yeah. that one. Yeah, that one's amazing. It really is. Uh, and you don't have to be an ACDC fan to sit there and say, like, yep, I know that song. I know that song. I know. Oh, oh, that was all on the same album. Like, most of the songs that people know from ACDC were on one album. And that it was just insane. So, uh, yeah. Um, thanks, Wayne. Says, if you pick Aerosmith, you'd probably have a boyfriend. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Ginger, what about you? You sing like a lady. <clears throat> Brian Johnson, yeah. Yep, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. A uh, little over 1,000 votes. 73% say ACDC. 73%, now, yeah. Now, Permanent Vacations, speaking of Aerosmith, was a pretty salty album. Mm-hmm. Cover to cover. It, it was, it was. Um, once again, though, uh, I think that if you go to recognizable songs oh, and you put up yeah if you put up track versus track on those albums i mean there are people that don't listen to a lot of music that know back in black songs you know yeah so um i don't know and you, like, and, and you can tell angus riffs too Oh yeah, whereas Joe, whereas Joe Perry, I mean, he's just your run of the mill guitarist. Like I think Joe really, Perry's, a, I think Joe Perry's a cool guitar player, but he's not a great guitar. He player. He just, like, yeah, he just never had that definitive sound. Like, no, like, and, and I'm not knocking on Joe Perry because he's definitely synonymous with Aerosmith. But yeah, you know, somebody, some other guitar player could have stepped into that role. Oh that yeah, fairly easily. Yeah. Now the only thing about Joe Perry is he has. Um, maybe, maybe the most famous guitar of all time. Yeah, it's a 1958 Les Paul, uh, Gibson Les Paul, that they call the Joe Perry guitar, but Dwayne Allman had it before him. Uh, it has a long lineage. Um, now it hasn't been confirmed. And I don't think that Mark Knopfler owned the guitar, but I know Knopfler played the guitar on several songs, borrowed it, um, and then Slash had it. Um, And ironically, I think Slash bought that guitar from Joe Perry uh, for like $8,000 back in like 1990 because, uh, no, that was back in like the late 80s. That was before like the Aerosmith rebirth happened and they were struggling right they they didn't have a hit for a while he needed money and so slash buys uh this 58 les paul and over the years joe perry was like look like you know um if you ever want to sell it and all of that and joe perry was a big um inspiration to slash and i think for perry's what 50th or 55th birthday or something like that slash gave it back to him gave it to him uh it's valued over like one and a half 1.5 million dollars now um amazing it's amazing it's amazing anyways cool song uh yeah 73 percent say um acdc uh number two this one came out saturday saturday i'm gonna start with you kyle so be listening here is a chimichanga really just a mexican egg roll yes (laughs) the same question could be offered is an egg roll just you know a, a chinese chimichanga i don't know but uh I think egg rolls have been around longer than maybe the chimichangas. I don't know. Um, That's a philosophical yeah. question. It is. I, we, hey, we only ask the deep questions here. We <laughs> only ask. And Gort is correct. Run DMC. Without Run DMC, Aerosmith would have probably died off as a band um, in the mid '80s. So yes, walk this way. You, they can thank Run DMC for bringing them. Let me just be honest. They yeah. did. They saved Aerosmith for sure. And hip hop in general. Well, no, no, yeah. I mean, Run DMC. There, there are there are three three groups, if you will, that um, really made rap slash hip hop 
like made it. it without these three bands hip-hop and rap that we know today wouldn't exist one of them is run dmc let's just be completely honest the other one sounds crazy to say this but the beastie boys uh, i'm a huge beastie fan but without the beastie boys uh, you wouldn't have had that middle uh class white suburban kid listen to rap without the beasties and then nwa without those three bands right there rap and hip-hop aren't anywhere near what it is today uh so run dmc whether you like them or not talking about some of the ogs like talking about saving not only did they save aerosmith they did in my opinion run dmc beasties and nwa um solidified may or legitimized rap and hip-hop yeah. i think solidified hip-hop for sure i'm not saying the sugar hill gang didn't know that. i'm saying that those three bands like legitimized like galvanized rap and said okay and then right after that, you had like Public Enemy, which you know, some of my favorite uh, band or rappers of all time. Sugar Hill Gang and all those guys early on, yeah, they they started it. But I think without DMC, Beasties, and NWA, I'm not so sure that rap and hip-hop is where it is now. That's just my opinion. I might be completely wrong. Uh, anyways. Um, Clover is a chimichanga. A so, Mexican egg roll. Okay, so I'm the Texas gatekeeper. I know, you Mexican, are the Texas gatekeeper. I, know, I know Mexican food, and in no way, shape, form, or freaking fashion is a chimichanga even where close to an egg roll. There is not near rice would be the only like remotely rice isn't even a vegetable, and there's no like okay you got beans, but I, like that's it. Like it, egg rolls are full of all kind of gross nasty vegetables. So no, no, just no. I just needed a simple yes or no. You didn't have to get all like. I gave you three of them right there. No, there's four. You went all like weird on me though. Yeah, I did. Yeah, Egg rolls are awesome. They're both awesome. Let's be honest. Now, now, if you have a choice, let's say uh -huh. you're in. Let's say you're in a, a city, maybe like Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm going and egg roll. A, and you got a choice of eating a chimichanga or an egg roll. Please go eat the egg roll. Yes, saying. because the, the Mexican food in Tulsa is terrible. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ginger is a chimichanga, a Mexican egg roll. Well, I was going to say yes, but Clover, I might upset Clover, so I'm going to say no, uh, I think. It, you let that easier. little bastard change your mind? Every once in a while, he says something that's semi you know, intelligent, and don't, I'm gonna have to give go him with big him head. Don't one. give him a big <laughs> head. It it is a, it is a Mexican air rule. I said yes. I'm just trying to save some face with clover, I guess. <laughs> New York Outcast says it's basically cat and cabbage. Okay. Uh, Gore says apparently the chimichanga was made by accident. Maybe I have no idea. Um. Chris is a chimichanga Mexican egg roll. No. No. Um, Wayne, not Wayne out there. He's kind of a, a foodie. Um, I want to. I want to get his opinion. Wayne's eaten at some fancy restaurants over his life, and, and and all that is not Wayne Lapierre out there. Is is a chimichanga just a Mexican egg roll? Let's hear, I want to hear what he has to say. I do not believe it is an Mexican Mexican. I think that as much as I like a good chimichanga, I think that that is um, insulting to egg rolls. So I'm an egg roll fan. Um, actually, okay, so. Raise your hand if you're if you like egg rolls in general. Now, do you like egg rolls or spring rolls better? Because they are different. The makeups of egg rolls and, and spring rolls are a little bit different. I I don't like either or yeah, either, okay whatever. But here's the thing: so the, the Chinese food buffet 10, 12, 15 years ago or so, up until that point, um, had spring rolls that were absolutely freaking delicious. Because I will try things. They were delicious. And I don't know. They got under new they got under new ownership and uh, they changed I wished I could find those spring rolls because they were amazing. But those yeah. are the only ones I've ever eaten that I was like, Oh, these are awesome. The rest of them, eh, not so much. I'm not a big cabbage person though. Um I was never a cabbage person until I married Yoko and 
Um, I don't like raw cabbage or anything. I, I mean, I have to, mine has to be, but I enjoy a good cabbage. Now she makes the thing with basically it's cabbage and sausage, like Italian sausage and rice with some soy sauce. It's just a real quick, easy little meal. So good, so good. Um. Christian uh-uh. Cole out there says the correlation is they're both deep fried. That was the whole point of the question is they look similar. So, yeah, uh, totally. Oh, go ahead. Go. I was going to say the technical definition. According yes. According to Google. Uh Oh, a chimichanga is a crisp, often deep fried tortilla containing a spicy filling of pork, chicken, etc. Mm-hmm. I have had pork egg rolls before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And chicken so, egg rolls, I think. I'm sure. I just I wanted to put that evidence in front of the court here. And uh, the vegetables, know. though, is the linchpin is the is the ratio of vegetables. Much, much, much higher on the egg roll. Yeah, the ratio is I don't there is no vegetables in chimichanga, is there? Unless it's a not I mean, you can yeah. add some lettuce or something if you wanted to. If you count beans, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, beans, yeah, tomatoes, maybe depending on the like. I said, listen, depending on what you add, you can throw yeah. in some lettuce, some some lettuce if you wanted to, you know. I mean, but technically, probably not. It's it's mostly, um, at least around here, you've got um, cheese with whatever. Usually it's chicken, usually. Uh, chicken, cheese, maybe some sour cream, some beans. Uh, and that's basically it, and then covered in like a, a, a queso sauce or something. That's kind of how I, I eat mine. But uh, Totally not Wayne LaPierre says egg rolls don't have to be veggies, though. Both subcategories. This sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Uh, both subcategories are the same type of food, same situation as hot dogs, burgers, subs, all subcategories of sandwiches. And this is where we disagree. A hot dog is not a sandwich. So, um, but uh, he says fried spring rolls are usually better. I'm not a fan of summer rolls generally, which are the soft racer pa- rice paper ones. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of those either. Um Chi Web says, "Pro tip: If you let your chickens lay, lay them in the hay, your eggs won't roll." That's that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Um, who's Horatio? I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Uh, lettuce is green water paper. This is true. Um, iceberg. I, I, I'm an iceberg. If I'm going to do lettuce, I'm not a le- big lettuce guy, but I, I if I do lettuce, it's going to be iceberg, which has like zero More health benefit. Crunch. Yeah, yeah, and then exactly. <laughs> the I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't like the taste of lettuce. It's I don't, perfect. you know. Yeah. So like, if I'm doing something, I, I want to have icebergs. It doesn't taste like anything. It brings yeah. nothing to the table except for texture, and that's it. Yeah. So um, if we do, if we do salad, I typically, I typically opt for more spinach. I see. I don't, I'm not a, I don't like spinach either. Yeah. If I do, I mean, I'm obviously if I have a, a salad, I'll eat whatever. But like when we do a salad here, I'll get uh, like a wedge salad. Um, but I like doing it with with iceberg lettuce, and it's just like I said, it doesn't bring anything to the table. It's just texture, and that's all I'm looking for with salad with lettuce is just the texture. Um, I don't like the fancy lettuce leaves and all that so that's just me now there are so there are i'm not a big spinach guy and there are some salads that are with like the fancy kind of lettuce that kind of looks like spinach but it's not spinach and it just doesn't taste good so um it is what it is um do we get all the way through yes chris did you answer that kyle answered that everyone got through with the chimichanga uh, 1.2 thousand votes, 61 percent agree that a chimichanga is really just a Mexican egg roll. Okay, 61 percent are wrong, but uh, we'll go with it. We'll, you know, we'll let you let you have your thing. 61 percent. They probably eat their Mexican food in Tulsa, so it's all. Well, that's probably yeah. true. Um, yeah, Caesar salad. So Caesar salad, I. For the longest time, okay, so I'm not a big Caesar salad fan. 
that said, you give me some like a chef salad with romaine or iceberg lettuce, and you throw some par shredded Parmesan on there, and the Caesar is dressing, I'll eat that. I'm not a big fan of the Caesar salad, like the lettuce makeup of that. Once again, I'm weird. I, I ever have like the makeup of a chef salad, throw some shredded Parmesan on there, and the I was not a fan of the Caesar salad dressing forever. Um because I know what it's made of, and I don't like anchovies and stuff like that. But I'm not going to lie. Like, Caesar salad dressing is pretty good, you know. You just got to get over it. And um, But I don't like it. I don't like it in, like, a Caesar actual salad. Give me a regular salad with either romaine or, or, or iceberg. I'm good. But it's weird. I don't know. I, I'm a weird guy. I understand that. Um, so, um, if it's going to be a food chat... Every week's a food chat. Every single week, one of my polls is usually a food poll. Um, that is the one thing. Typically, there are two things that galvanize the gun industry. Food and music. Most people love to eat. And most people, they don't have to agree on the same kind of music. But most gun guys like music as well. So usually I always oh, have at Cars least are up there too. And cars are up there too, um, for sure. But I think that, you know, I'm always going to have music or a food. One of the two is always going to be included um, in my polls every week. Pancakes? I'm not a pancake guy. I shouldn't say that. I don't mind pancakes and I don't mind waffles. But I don't like syrup at all. I can't stand syrup. So if I'm going to eat pancakes or waffles, like you're going to have to have like some blueberry stuff or... Um, you know, something that is not syrup because I can't stand syrup. Preach. So you don't like syrup either? I hate it. Man, I thought I was the only person. That, usually when I say I don't like syrup, I just get chastised by people. No, I'm with you, brother. <laughs> Midnight Range TM. What's up, home diggity? I am definitely in between two weirdos. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's like for, but 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 this is most this just adds a reason on there. It's not like you we didn't know that. Uh this just happens to be like a different reason why we're weird. Um all right, this is gonna be a bonus poll, a bonus pony poll. Real quick, uh Chris, pancakes or waffles? Pancakes for me. Pancakes? Kyle, do you like pancakes or waffles? If it's yeah, no. okay. that, that's tough for me too, because I can eat Eggos frozen. Like, they're good. Oh. But I like uh, chocolate chip pancakes the most. Chocolate so chip pancakes are, are, are pretty good. Yeah. Chocolate chip pancakes with, uh, like, uh, whipped cream on there. Oh. Speaking of my language. Pretty tough, man. Pretty tough. Yeah. Clover, pancakes or waffles, man? I go pa I go pancakes. I mean, if it's, you know. It's, it's now, you are a syrup guy, I guess? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I forgot I'm, to ask you, Chris, of... you're a syrup guy. Me, guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love syrup. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to have French toast or what, pancakes or waffles without, yeah, without syrup. Like, no. Uh, See, I don't mind. I don't mind French toast without syrup. I just throw some right. powdered sugar and stuff on there. I can eat now, French toast and I, re I prefer it without syrup. That's, now, that looks weird, but not all syrups are created equal. As well, so you got to. I would know, mind. like I just there don't like syrup nasty, in general. Way too some sweet. Nasty syrups out there. There's some nasty syrups out there, but yeah. there's also some that are not are not that sweet. I yeah, mean, I I, I, have I, you played I just, around with the different ones that I hop when never? You should do um, that one time. Good. Usually, I'll usually if I'm an IHOP and I'm you know I eat I, I I usually don't do like pancakes or IHOP or, or, or uh, waffles. Yeah. When I'm gonna get breakfast stuff, it's usually like a, a ham slice, some eggs, um, yeah, some toast, some hash browns. So, but if I'm gonna do that, then I usually will use like blueberry, the little yeah. blueberry uh, sauce. They, you know, it's technically called a syrup, but it's not a syrup. Yeah, so I'll, I'll ask for the blueberry well, and, again, and all that. There's different kinds of syrups, but yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a big like maple syrup. I'm not a big traditional syrup guy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, get a text in here. Got to go big Colorado at IHOP. Just saying. 
That's the only way to go. Yeah, um, I, I want. I do want to. My wife um, the Western. I think is hers. I think. Yeah, the uh, you said Western omelet. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I like I like uh, any omelet. My go-to if I just make one, it's going to be like ham, egg, cheese, and onions. But yeah. I tell you, like a southwestern omelet, it's got little peppers in there and stuff, a little picante or, or salsa. Oh, uh, I'm I, I like um, steak omelets. You get a little steak in there and some a one. I mean, you can't go wrong with eggs in general. Like uh, I do, I, I do. I, I kind of like fluffed over this, and I want to make it. I want I want to make a, a statement. Um, I've been texting back and forth with him for a little bit. And, and and for me, I've been talking with with Midnight Range, and, and I and I didn't mean to just glass over the fact that it's been well over a year um, since since Travis has kind of been out there. He's been doing his own thing, his own private life, and all that. Uh, and I just had a text saying it's been almost a year, over a year since Midnight Range TM has been in the chat. Um, and I don't want to glass it over. It is great to see uh, Trav back. Um, He's been taking, like I said, taking a break with work and, and then life in general um, and all of that. Uh, it is great to uh, see you, buddy. And um, yeah, glad to have you back. Glad to have you back. Now, next, all we got to do is get the closer to come back on Sunday nights. Uh, no offense to anybody, Chris's or anybody else's stuff. Um, that was hands down my favorite show on YouTube. Uh, for several years was Sunday night set. And they said about 10 o'clock. It, d- it depends. Sometimes it didn't start till one o'clock in the morning, whenever he got off work and, and all that, uh, midnight range TM is a, is a chef. And, um, but, um, closer. And it was the last show of the week. It was on Sunday nights and God had some good times on that show. Um, going all the way back to the old gun channel days. And it was just, Holy shit, Moo's out there. Like, God, almighty Moo's out there. What's up, Two Live Moo? Talked with him the other night. I jumped in on Gary's chat Friday night. Sunday night, because he was covering for Rich or something like that, and, and I saw Moo for a while. And bring back the closer. I'm telling you, you got to bring back the closer, bro. You got to do it. If you're, if you're going to be stupid enough to make an appearance, Trav, you got you got to bring the closer back. Maybe not every week, but I think that maybe uh, and every now and then special edition closer closer needs to happen. So, anyways, the internet demands it. Absolutely, they do. It's good to have you back. Okay, a line cook. I mean, I was trying to be nice and call him a chef, but I mean, you know, line cook, Waffle House cook. I mean, like, like I don't know if they're called chefs at Waffle House, but I mean, he cooks at Waffle House. But I mean, I'm, I'm, if you're being paid to cook, are you not a chef? I don't know. I don't know. No pressure. I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying there's a lot of people that would be very happy, bro. If every now and then you brought back the closer, that's all we're asking is every now and then. Just give us, just give us a little, just a little bit. Um. Okay. The third, I think we finished that. So the third one, third question's got uh, 2.8 thousand votes, 2.8 thousand votes. Dots on pistols. Dots on pistols, yes or no? Clover, uh, yes or no? Dots on pistols. In general, no. Yep. Yep. Um, Ginger? I am not gun Amish, so I'm going with dots on pistols. Okay. You're <laughs> Ginger, and you're making fun of somebody <laughs> else, so okay. Uh, by the way, um, never mind. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Chris, dots on pistols, yes or no? Yeah, I think everybody knows mine's a big yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, you would literally shock people if you were going to say no. I don't like, you know. You're only doing that for show on YouTube. You really, you know, secretly, deep down, hate dots on pistols. Just everything has one on there. So, um, Yeah. Uh, Kyle, I think I know where you're going with this one as well. Yeah, I'm gonna split the crowd here. Uh, I'm a no die guy, but I, I'm not against them. 
I yeah, that's that. kind of where I am. I've been for uh, no for the longest time. As people know that I, I do, I'm not a big fan of dots on pistols. Um, but I'm starting over the last couple years. I, I've gotten some guns that have them on there, and then I've gotten some uh, dots to put on certain guns. And I put one out a video out last weekend. It was the Gideon Omega. I put it on the Kiger. Uh, go check that one out. But um, I'm not opposed to it anymore. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to sit there and say I'm going to have a dot on every one of my guns. That ain't going to happen. But I, I, I see some of the benefits of them as I'm getting older. Yes, I'm, I'm going to be 49 next month. So um, I still have good eyesight, but I can see the benefit of that. Uh, I think that for mechanics, there are some good things that you'll have to do to see the dot that will produce consistent mechanics but i I, i'm still not a converted person yet i'm still definitely not one of those to um um been to a zz top concert on dots man i've been to a a couple of lollapaloozas i've been to a lot of current of concerts on dots um i remember one of the first concerts my dad ever took me to and i was early 80s uh, I was a kid. Was the ZZ Top at, at Reunion Arena in Dallas? And if you're from the Dallas area, you remember old Reunion Arena. But I remember, I, I remember it, a, a specific smell from that concert that I remember actually asking my dad con- constantly, "What's that smell?" Later on in life, I become to really, really, really love that same smell and all that. But uh, there was so much weed being smoked. And I was like, you know, six or seven. I kept asking my dad, what's that smell? What's that smell? And my dad was like, oh, you know, I don't remember exactly what he said. I was young. But uh, like I said, I later on in life really have enjoyed that, that distinct smell in life. But yeah, ZZ Top commercial concert. First time I ever was exposed to weed that I know that I can remember. So I guess I can probably blame them for all my, you know, transgressions in life. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting around to coming around more on dots. Um, yeah. Now, for you guys that, that, you know, even Clover and Kyle and I, we're not like on team dot or whatever but can appreciate them on certain things. But what kind of reticles do y'all like? Because um, the one that I'm enjoying right now is the Omega, and it's got like a 45 MOA circle with like a, a two or three MOA dot. So it's, But I love a circle dot. Like in general, on, on the rifle, I love a circle dot reticle. Uh, a lot of people don't like them on pistol dots, but like Chris, like you've got a, a shit ton of dots on your pistols. What's your favorite like just reticle on pistol dots? I... I prefer just a three MOA dot, but just the, just the dot itself. Just the okay. dot, but yeah. With that being said, I am starting to come around to where I'm really liking the circle and the dot. The oh, okay, pistol. really? Okay. Um, See, I've always liked that because I've been a big fan of EOTEX forever. Um, been running EOTEX for, and that's a, they're a circle dot, and I think that's probably why I've loved EOTEX is they've had that circle dot reticle forever. And so it's just a familiar reticle to me. Um, and maybe that's why I like it so much. But, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't mind a dot necessarily. Um, but with me, is, is I talked about this in the video, and, and you guys know me well enough to know that I actually, like, still struggle shooting a pistol dot because – my eye, when I see something like that, I want to dot the eye. I want to dot with that front post. And that's going to force you to probably shoot a little bit low. And and with a circle dot, I don't have, how do I put this? I don't feel like I should dot the eye or absolute co-witness is what it's called. I don't feel like I should do that with a circle dot. If I had just a dot, I would probably naturally try to co-witness off that front side and shoot very low or whatever uh clover saw me do that at TrueCon last year at one of the companies we were at had a dot and i just i couldn't understand what i kept on missing and then i realized crap i'm like you know i'm trying to dot the eye on that front sight um so the circle dot to me with a pistol 
kind of forces my eye not to co-witness, right? It's just use that reticle itself. Uh, Kyle, of this, of the dots on pistols, do you have a specific reticle that you do enjoy? No, but from what it sounds like, I, I like the circle dot. Uh, at least that would be my first choice. Yeah. Just because it kind of gives you a frame of reference and you can make sure. Yeah. Like you were saying that you're, you're, you're not trying to line up that front sight post anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's so weird to, for me, like for years, I think you're the lot of the same way, Kyle, is, is I, not only was I taught this way, but this is how I've shot for 30 years. Uh, handguns is focus, front sight, focus, front sight, focus, front sight, focus. Everything behind the front sight is blurry. And now with the dot, you're focusing on target and just letting that dot come to the target. Uh, so for me, it's having to retrain my eye in, in the way of shooting, uh, which has been the toughest for me. It's not that I don't like dots. It's just a weird thing for me to hold a pistol up, present a pistol, and not be focused on the front sight. You're focused on the target. And that's just the, I have to retrain my mind and my eye on how to shoot. And maybe that's, maybe that's why I've been reluctant for so long. Uh, Clove, what's your favorite reticle if you have one on a on a dot circle dot of some sort you do like a circle dot okay yeah because uh, you're not i think that's funny the three people that are are not traditional pistol dot fans all like the circle dot i wonder if that's a trend uh ginger what's your favorite reticle <clears throat> i go with the standard dot like chris okay I can't so do, isn't that weird? i can't do the circle dot it, i've tried it with the swamp fox i just yeah. do not like it so isn't that weird? The three people that don't necessarily like pistol dots, we all like a circle dot reticle. And the two people that actually do like pistol dots oh. like just the dot itself. That's kind of strange. I think I, I think I may know why. Okay. Principles of sight alignment apply. We've had that conversation before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can you center the outer circle in the window of the dot. And then when yep. you do that, you know that that dot is dead center. Yep. It's just like just like when you're paying attention to proper sight alignment with your rear sight, front sight target. It's the same. The same principles are in play. It's just right. with, with a reticle. Every you know, the everything is in one plane because it's in that sight. Yeah. No. It's go ahead, Chris. You were going to say something. Well. So, like, my first year in the USPSA, I always ran Holosun 510Cs, and I was mm -hmm. always running the dot and the circle together. Mm -hmm. And I would throw a lot of Charlies. And one day, okay. when I was heading to a match, I'm like, I'm going to turn that circle off okay. and just concentrate on getting that dot in the A zone. And it did help. But I think where that dot and circle really comes in to play is more in a defense situation, especially if you're carrying your concealed carry gun with a dot and a mm -hmm. circle your your targets are for the most part going to be a lot closer it's quicker and, I think that, and i think that circle helps because it's pretty much if you got that circle on the chest area of that target you're going to hit that chest area there. yeah it's quicker so, acquisition yeah. and also for moving it can help i you know for me i mean i was using circle dot 20 years ago or maybe even longer and one of the things about having that circle, and it's more of like a slow fire bullseye style competition, but you know you can tailor that circle to the round target, right? Now you're mm -hmm. shooting IDPA, whatever you know, uh, you know silhouette style silhouette style. It, target, it doesn't yeah. match up to your target. But yep. if you were shooting circles, um, you know you can line that up. It, it's also it gives you. With that dot, it's extremely hard to do because it's a small dot. Not that you can't if you know the MOA on that dot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you've got circle dot, you can also range with it. Yep, that's true, too. Yep. No, like I said, for, for me, um, one, I've been using circle dots on rifles and stuff on, on um, optics forever. And, and, and I've always loved it. It's always suited my eye, right? Um, so that's probably one of the reasons why, but, but honestly, as far as a pistol dot, um, 
I said it earlier, it, it, it makes it's it's just busy enough where it's not just a dot. It's just busy enough that my eye can't focus on the front sight, you know, and it and it's it's something that's different enough that's going to take my focus off of that front sight and more on the target and all that. If I had just a dot, I'm not saying that I would, I'd have to, but I'd have to really concentrate not to absolute co-witness that dot with the, the front sight um the circle dot i don't have for me i don't have that feel like i need to co-witness that it's just put that circle in the middle of the window and i'm looking through that looking at target and once that circle gets on that target pull the trigger uh, i still you can see in the video that i put out there uh i'm shooting 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 every now and then i'll I'll try to co-witness that just naturally where I'll be focusing on the front sight instead of uh, the reticle and I'll, I'll miss a shot every now and then. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting better at it, but it's still, it's, it's a huge learning curve for me. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Kyle, you were going to say something earlier. Uh, I saw you unmute. No, nah, Clover hit, hit the nail on the head. I was going to say that. And this is in theory. I would use the circle as a way to train, but yeah, like Clover was saying, side alignment is really kind of what I'm seeking. That's kind of like the motive there. So exactly. Uh, but I feel like eventually I'd I'd probably graduate to where I'm like, ah, oh, I don't need my training wheels anymore, and go yeah. with three MOA dot. And, and, and maybe I and, and, yeah, and maybe I yeah. work to that point sometime. Um, I don't necessarily see that happening anytime soon because i've only got dots on four or five pistols and and so the vast majority of my pistols i'm still going to be using open you know and rear sight front sight and all that um but maybe one day i even though i don't use them all the time maybe i will get comfortable enough for that dot but once again i just naturally like that circle dot reticle i have forever um, and Chloe's been talking about saying I, I've been using circle dots for 20 years easily, uh, and it's just one of for me, it's my favorite reticle. I, I it's just one of those that's probably one of the reasons why I like a BDC and, and LPVOs, um, even though it's got the ladder below it, but it's still based on kind of like a circle dot mentality, and that's why I, I kind of dig that. So I don't know, I, I just, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting used to it. Um, I, I definitely can see where once you get used to it, follow up shots and all that transitioning from target to target will be much quicker than with irons. I definitely see why people use them in, in competition shooting now transition from target to target, quick follow up shots will be easier. I'm just not there yet. Cause I still, I still have to basically, I'm in that, that stage of retraining my eyes and my brain on how to look through a dot that's just me though um but i'll get there we'll get there i'm definitely not the point to say i will you know no dots on pistols i'm not I, i'm i'm not there anymore uh you asked me that three or four years ago hell no never put a dot on a pistol i'm not that anymore i i i can see why people enjoy them it's just i have to learn how to do it better if you will and um you know that circle dot for me has helped me uh, kind of get used to that. Anyways, uh, like I said, 2.2, no, 2.8 thousand votes. 70% say dots on pistols. Yes, dots on pistols, 70 to 30. Um, kind of surprised that it was that big of a margin. I thought it'd be, you know, maybe 60, 40 or something like that, but I wouldn't think 70, 30. But I guess that just shows you that that's kind of where the industry is and that's why hell i mean if you look at now pretty much any gun that's being manufactured right now uh they're at least going to be optic cut they're gonna be optic ready um to where you know you you're, it'll be available to put an optic on there um snob says i still have a couple circle dots but i prefer just a dot but when he started running dots, he loved the circle dot. He feel like the dot is less busy and doesn't take away attention from the target. And, and, and that, that probably was. Like Chris, even Chris was saying when he first started with dots, he was a circle dot guy. Uh, Ginger, when you first started shooting dots on pistols, did you ever, 
like were you a circle dot guy or have you always just been just the dot i've always just been the dot okay now let me ask you this on ars and stuff are you a a true like red dot fan or do you like different reticles uh true red dot most of the time if not lpb well i'm saying you no know, but i'm saying to you though as reticles on red dots uh do you do you just, like just the dot or do you like circle the, dots on ars just the dot just the dot okay so that makes kind of sense um now chris generally were you a circle dot guy in ars beforehand yeah i would say with rifle dots i was but yeah I'm, now that I'm kind of like going back and thinking to like the first pistol dots, Vortex and Burris were kind of the first two companies to really get big into that pistol dot game. And I don't even think they had a circle at that time. I mean, you were it was you just, just a got dot. a dot and that was it. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for me, like I said, um, I've always kind of been, I, mean, I, I, I don't care. Like on a, on a rifle, I could go circle dot. I could go just the dot. I, I can go different reticles. Uh, I prefer to circle dot. Um, but it's, it's, it's weird. Like if I have a, most ARs and most rifles, if you have an optic on there, you don't have, you have flip ups or something, but unless you have like an A2 front post or something, most ARs, most rifles don't have permanent front sights. Like you can flip them down or whatever. So you're not trying to co witness with ARs, you know, um, where most handguns, you know, all handguns are going to have, when they come with a gun, they're going to have the front sight on there. Um, how many of you guys? Uh, is is it a thing once again i'm talking about someone that's not into the the pistol dot game um uh, most handguns these days have you know you can replace aftermarket front sights and, and all of that um do you guys take out front sights and run handguns without front sights at all or do, are you always going to have front sights on there totally depends okay so I got some that's that way and some that are not. So it kind of depends. You know, because I think people, if you ask people with ARs and say front sight, eh, probably not. Probably don't. I'm never going to use the front sight, even flip ups. Probably not. So I don't really care about ARs. Yeah, usually in rifles. Usually in rifles. guns, I, I, I don't know anyone that sit front. there and say, I don't want a front sight on there. I mean, in general, you know, so it's kind of a strange thing, you know. Yeah, that would eliminate your issue, though. If, and it would, and that's like kind of what I'm you. thinking about doing is maybe, maybe on one of these guns, I just think about taking the front sight off completely, and train my eye that way. I have to rely on on that dot at that yep. point, you know. Yep. Oh. Ginger, what about you? I'm all for having a full set of iron sights on a pistol with a dot. And the thing that drives me insane is when you remove the rear uh, plate to put on a dot and the sight goes with it. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, I, I, you know, because, I, you know, I, I've got a couple dots on pistols that some of those guns that the whole, the whole, the plate removes the, the rear sight. And so now you had to go find one of those dots that have like the built in rear sights on them and they're terrible. I can't, I can't do that. I, you know, I can't do and I it. think. I think if anything, it's more of a training thing, but I always like having backup sites on everything. Okay, so that's interesting. That's interesting because the vast majority of people, and I'm going to bring Chris and Kyle and, and, and Clover into this, um, but you just said, I was waiting for someone to say it. You know, you start talking about people about pistols and say, you know, would you take the front sights off? No, 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 I've got to have got to have the, the front and rear sights on there. You know, what happens if the battery goes out on the red dot and, and you don't have any sights? The same people are the same ones that don't run any kind of sights at all on their ARs. So the same person that says, I won't run a pistol without, even with a dot, without front and rear sights on there, are you are usually the same ones that don't give a shit about any kind of, of open or, or, or sights on, on ARs or rifles. So... Why is it? And I'm, I'm asking this because I, I'm a rifle guy as far as dots, right? I'm a rifle guy kind of transitioning into pistol dots. 
um, I have very limited experience with pistol dots, but I think it's hilarious that people that would normally say, I don't run any kind of irons on an AR, but I, I have to have them on the pistol, even with a dot. It's just kind of like, well, why wouldn't you, you know, like why, if, if you don't well, like them on rifles, why do you want them on your pistols? The weird along going along your train of thought there. Yeah. Um, with rifles, let's say you've got, you know, you got backup irons and you've got your optics. Mm -hmm. Well, you could have that on a throw lever, or even if it's not, a lot of times, you know, a pair of flyers or, yeah. you know, a, a punch, like anything you can, you can usually unscrew and get the thing off. Right. Yeah. Um, with a handgun, you're not removing that optic easily. You're going to have to have yeah. the right size Allen or hex key and whatever. And it's tiny little screws and, you yeah. know, and then, so the question is, you've got to have that front and rear sight, but are you replacing those? Are you making sure that you can utilize those through that window mm -hmm. on that site? Because I've got red dots on quite a few different things that yep. the sites are worthless. They're yeah. Worthless. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. With yeah. that, with that, with that, with the dot. optic, with the optic, yeah. yeah. With it on yeah. there. They're, they're absolutely yeah. worthless. You would have to take it off to be able to use them. Otherwise mm -hmm. you're just point shooting. And at that point, who gives a crap? If the red dot goes out, just point shoot. That's right. That's right. I think, I think it, what it is is that in all the rifle classes I've taken, we've shut off the dot and just point shot with the rifle. And it seems a lot easier to point shoot with a rifle than it is a handgun because there's so many things that could go wrong when aiming a handgun. Well, it is, John, because of sight yeah. radius more than anything. Right. Yeah. And that's what I'm alluding to is it's just – and I'm with you. like when Or barrel I, if, length. If my yeah. sights don't co-witness – with my pistol dot. Well, it really, it's handguard it. length. Is let's, let's be honest. Yeah. The barrel length doesn't mean anything. It's it's the handguard length that's going to dictate the the sight radius. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, you've got a longer plane that you're looking down. Yes, I guess for point shooting is what I'm getting I understand. at. Exactly it's similar. It's not. It's not directly. It's not three inches or four inches. It's right. Usually yeah, yeah, yeah. a foot at least. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and that's what I mean. It's a, you know, I'm with Clover. Like when I put on a dot, and if I don't. I can't co-witness with the rear sight or the front and rear sight. It drives me insane. I don't know why it drives me insane, but it does. And for some reason, when I, when I don't have any backup sights on a rifle and I can just, I can imagine that dot in the center of that glass with a pistol. I can't do that. Yep. Yep. Um, a great one. This is something that I, I have on several of mine, but uh, people that are, um, Another option is to do offset irons, um, and, and and I I call them forty five irons. So especially if you have like M lock or something, you know you can kind of get. Now what I would suggest if you if you want to do like a forty five or offset, I would I would probably have your your irons on the top rail, and then the forty five can't or whatever be your optic at a forty five. I wouldn't necessarily maybe run forty five or offset uh, irons. I'd probably run irons on top and then maybe do the offset cant with with a dot that's just me that's how i prefer it but uh, a lot of people don't utilize 45 um you know can um optics or iron sights or whatever can you uh um brennan al kadim is my son-in-law so he is in okinawa it is i guess 10 30 in the morning so uh ohio gazimus meet you up um but yeah um what the hell y'all doing watching this shit you're in okinawa like go to the fucking beach like do something go get some eat some amazing food like what are you doing what are you doing i'm disappointed in you i'm on you've been married two weeks to my daughter and I'm, you've already disappointed me I don't, good luck good luck good luck because yeah that's what it's not just joking uh waiting on friends to wake up yeah i understand so they they took um they're gonna be over there for a month my 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 daughter and and brenda are gonna be there for a month my wife will be there for a little over two weeks two and a half weeks whatever they're gonna be there for a month they've got friends of theirs that are in okinawa with them that, that kind of went on on the trip with them and they rented an airbnb um i'm telling you jet lag is a real thing guys i hope you guys get 
used to it now. Um, stay up as long as you can today. Like, go run, go jog, do something to keep you up. But when you get tired tonight, yeah, for sure. Bo shizzle. Um, there you go. Um, threw me off there. Going an hour and twenty minutes. I, I'm I'm about ready to fall asleep myself. Um, and we we just now got out of the polls. Basically. We just now got out of the polls. But but here's the thing: I wasn't trying to get out of the polls very quickly because I didn't have a topic, and I knew that especially with the pistol dot, I thought that's a topic that we could actually have a pretty decent conversation on. And we can always talk food. I mean, we can talk food for an hour and a half just in general, um, for sure. Anything anybody wants to bring up out there, uh, we can. I, 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 want, I don't want to run more much. More. Yeah, you know, what's up? I got something to bring up. Um, yep. So we're seeing a lot of companies switch over to integrated comps into the guns. Are you yeah. guys more I am not comp a comp guy. Integrated? I'm not a comp guy in general. Are you talking handguns, right? On handguns, I'm yeah. not, I, I am not, I'm not. I don't dislike them. Um, but I am not, um, a comp guy in general. Um, I've got two or three that have comps on them and, and they're, and they're fine. They're fine. I'm just not a big comp. I know Clover is starting to get into comps. I know Chris is a comp guy. Kyle, are you a comp guy? Yeah. I mean, if it, if it makes, um, <clears throat> follow on shot acquisition easier, if it's a smooth shooter, like, if that comp is doing its job, I'm all about it. I so here's the thing, it. and I'm going to let Chris and Clover bring up there. And, and, and as I know, they're both comp guys, but uh, they're also more of full size handgun guys, also, right? They like that five to six inch barreled handgun in general. I'm more of a, a, a compact subcompact guy. Um, and so for me, having a comp on there is just weird. You know, most of the guns that I have are guns for, like, concealed carry. And that's typically going to add on, what, another inch or so to the end of that gun. So now a, a five or six inch barrel is now a six or seven inch, you know, length gun. Uh, and maybe that's why, I mean, like I said, I don't dislike them, but I just, I, I'm not a big fan of them because the, the, the added weight, the added length. Is there a benefit to them? Hell yeah. I'm just not a big comp guy. Uh, but Chris and, and Clover are more full-size handgun guys in general. So, I don't know. Is that why you guys like comps, Chris, Clover? Uh, go for it. Hey, hey, Brendan, I'll, when I get off of here, I'm going to call you guys. Um, I talked to Sky for a little bit before the show started. I'll call you guys. So, um, stand by for the standby. Within the next half hour or so, I'll call you, okay? Right, bye. Um, Chris, Clover? Here's my issue with these if we go back to John's original question, we start talking yeah. about integrated comps. Okay. I, this is true. There is a difference. There is a difference. And maybe you like integrated more than aftermarket. I, is that what you're saying? Well, no, I, I have a problem with the integrated comps, especially if it's going to be an issue where the comp basically is, not removable. It's kind of part of the slide assembly itself. Oh, you're talking if 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 you have to use it, like you well, can't they, remove they, it because it's you, going yeah. to. It will yeah. eventually become useless. It will it will lead foul so bad. And yeah. The reason I say I that is see that. I, on my competition PCCs, I have already pretty much plugged one comp completely up. Yeah, and they are a pain in the ass to clean. And I mean, there's, there's techniques out there. There's, you can use croil on them and things like that. But a lot of these comps, you're, you're getting them there. They're Cerakoted to match the slide. And uh, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the integrated comp. I would have rather you used, just take it off. And Have you used the stuff from modern Spartan systems before? I don't think I've used that oh, yet. If you, if you can oh, use the products fantastic and, and even better Carbon if you can avoid lawyer. if you can avoid a conversation i love marcus but if you can avoid a conversation with marcus unless you've got two hours uh, but their stuff is unreal they are, and, here, they are and here's the other thing to that though too is a lot of people will never shoot enough rounds see that gun to to start having issues with that comp too. And, and, and let's be honest. Yeah. I, I, the average person isn't going to put enough rounds in general to have that issue. It, it really depends on, do you like having the comp 
on the end of that gun, you know. Is um, it is it letting up or is it carbon? Oh, that's good. For question. me, it's I letting. Thinking, I, I would my, say carbon would probably be a bigger issue, wouldn't you? In general, letting is a bigger issue for me because I use polymer coated bullets. There's a certain oh, very gotcha. There's a okay. certain there. <laughs> There's a certain very heavy metal that's on the periodic table of elements, and that's kind of all I'll say about that because I don't want to get in trouble, that uh, if you were able to acquire some and safely utilize that, is that one of the most phenomenal things you could ever use in your life, and it's an old-school gunsmithing trick uh, that that will get rid of lead pretty put in the private. Put in the private chat. And do it out. I know what he's talking about. Do oh, it okay. outside too. Uh, <laughs> do it in a well ventilated area. <laughs> Respirator. Well, well, the, ventilated well, area yeah, gloves. I would say mask. Blah, yeah, blah, a mask blah, would blah, probably blah. be helpful. Um, but if you handle it safely, um, it's not. It's not a. No, problem. I get it. Um, you, yeah, but yeah, you definitely want to be prepared for it though, and just don't break a thermometer and um, expect it to work. It's, it's, it, can, it would take a lot say. of thermometers to get what you need to do that. Anyway. <laughs> True that. You would have to, uh, you, if you know people in like a chemistry lab or, you know, something like that. I at a university or something. Science. Yeah. yeah, that's the best way to get get your hands on something. Yeah. Uh, real quick, super chat from Travis Pieces. What's the opinion of the panel on the Gerson Disruptor? Is there a Kinnick that matches it that may be cheaper? Uh, say the TP9SF um so okay i i like the disruptor um i don't honestly know what canics are running these days uh, it, would in general. To, it would have to be the mete it would have to be any of the mete lines because i believe the sfs and them are not optics ready out the box so you'd have to do like so a, my a, sf elite which is one of my favorite handguns uh was obviously is not optic cut is yeah. i've had it that for six years now something like that and i love that gun uh the mate i would say probably are um a good one i but i don't know if if you can get a mate for the price that you're gonna get a disruptor uh you're not you know, I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking if I, I'm, I'm saying I just, unless you find yeah. one aftermarket or something, you're not going to beat that price. Yeah. Um, now, I would also like to say, and no offense to anybody out there, and, and my good friends at EA and Gerson, I don't think that the Disruptor is as good of a gun as the Mate. Okay. Right off the bat, just my general experience with both of them. Um, but if you went pound for pound, dollar for dollar, yeah. Yeah. If you're talking about what value you're getting for the disruptor for the price that you're getting the disruptor versus the value versus price, they're about, you know, they're about the same, but if you're just going quality of gun, uh, the Canix a little bit better, but you're also paying quite a bit more, uh, than, than the disruptor. So it really depends on what you're looking for. I, I, I do like the disruptor. But I'm also a big Canic fan as well. Um, so um, I have the can. I, I can't say much about the disruptor yet because I haven't shot it yet. All I've done. I, I, I have shot very little of it. I, I've got a little bit in there, like not even fifty rounds, like a couple mags, right? Yeah, I haven't even pulled the trigger. I mean, I haven't even put a round through it. Yet. I, I've only I've got about fifty rounds in it, so. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, you, you can go get a bate for, I don't know, under 600, right? No matter where you go, it's under 600. So. Uh, Some place you can get under 500, maybe. But a disruptor, I mean, you can find them. Yeah. Uh, disruptor, you can get them for 350 bones online. I don't know about that's That's pretty low price. If that's the case, then value versus price, it's no, you know, it's no brainer. But if you yeah. just put guns up head to head i mean the mechanic's probably a better gun but you're also might be paying 200 bucks more for it i don't know it depends on what what you value more you value that cost or you value um cost versus value i mean are you do you are you looking for which is the better gun um you can't go wrong with either one of them you know go ahead i, th Sorry. 
I think what what it is is with the Canik, you're getting the accessories. So you're getting holster, you're getting cleaning kit, you're getting mm -hmm. uh, multiple optic plates, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. You're getting the magwell. You're just adding on accessories now. If you get the disruptor, you're not getting as many accessories, but you... I mean, but you're also paying all, a couple hundred bucks less too. Yeah, so. you're paying a couple hundred bucks less. So it all comes down to is does that do those accessories add up to the value of where you're at? Yeah, uh, Travis saying the black camo. I think Chris, you got the black camo disruptor, do you not? Yeah, I've I got, got the black. green one. I love both of them, but that green I've always I, that, that green just for me. I, I'm an OD green guy, but that black camo is pretty sweet too. I think the plus sides to the disruptor are you're not going to have to use a plate. You're going to be able to direct mount an direct RMSC down dog right to it. Now, the, but, the, but, but on the flip side is the RMSC footprint a deterrent. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people like RMR footprint, you know? I would have said, I would say a year ago, yeah, it would have been a deterrent. There's so many RMSC footprint dots out now. Yeah. Um, and true, tried and true ones, the Holosun 507K, the 407K. Yeah. Um, the other thing you're getting that threaded barrel. Yep. Um, but now the downside to the disruptor right now is getting extra mags for it. This Pretty is much true, everybody true. is sold out of MP9 and, mags. And holsters. Yeah. Um, Paul's going to be sending me a holster. They had a few like samples that came with uh, early on that he's going to send me a holster for because right now, if you want a holster for the disruptor, you pretty much have to make your own or get a custom one made uh, uh, a mold because it doesn't fit. It, it's not going to fit like an MMP. It's not going to fit like an HK. It's not going to fit a, a Glock. It's, it's, it's very MMP ish, if you will, but it's not going to fit an MMP holster. So there's really not a holster out there for the disruptor. Um, so you're going to have to go and spend a hundred, at least hundred bucks for a custom holster for that, um, as of right now. But it's also, you know, unless you run it with light, unless you, there yeah. you go. It's working good with my works holsters. If I run a stream, if you run a DLR light though, one on it, but you got to have right. light on it. You got to have a light have any doesn't... Work with it. That's exactly right. Um, go ahead, John. Is, Sorry. Is it proprietary mags or can it cross it? With I have it. I haven't been able to find any yet. Now we, the Walther mags were close, but I, I could get them to lock in, but I couldn't get locked back. Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, see, that's a plus side to Canic. If you can't find Canic mags, you can buy Walther, Walther. mags. This so, is true. Are they CZ, maybe CZ75? Is it going to try that? There is a possibility. Now, I, did, I tried the Ross Martin mags. They will not work in it. Um or maybe a CZ pattern magazine. Um, or maybe two two six. And, and, and it's gonna it'd be interesting what happens with mags when and if they become more readily available. But I'll tell you what, um, here is the downside, at least um to a certain extent, canic mags slash walther mags, but canic mags are not the cheapest mags in the world. They're not crazy expensive, but they're they're not Glock mags, they're not. Seventeen ninety nine for a magazine. Uh, they're, they're relatively um, maybe you know thirty bucks for a mag, uh, at least in my uh, experience with that. Um, but you know, now I don't know how true it is because I have no experience with it. I've been digging through the forums since I got the disruptor, mm -hmm. and somebody said that there was a Beretta pattern mag that would work with it. So, with a disruptor, really? I but who knows. I mean, they're forums, so. Is it the 92 mags, maybe? That's no. what I'm. Willie? A 92 know, mag? Because you disruptor? have a 92, don't you, Trey? Yeah, I've got two of them. You should I'll try, try that. Just see if it works. Because normally uh, with the imports, they're either pattern off of Walther, CZ, SIG, or Bretta mags. Yeah. And Mechgar is making the mags for the disruptor, so. Yeah. John Brown Productions, what's up, man? Uh, JBP, it's been a while, bro. Uh, so the Sar, Artex of the SAR PX9 takes P226 and G3 mags. Um, I wouldn't really. I'm, that, now the 92 mags are starting to. 
It's interesting. Oh, and the G3 mags will not work with the uh, disruptor either. I tried that too. Oh, really? I didn't. Yeah. yeah. I haven't tried. Uh, I guess they've only put a couple, uh, uh, you know, 50 rounds roughly through it. So I haven't had to worry about going and get a bunch of mags yet. Um, I, I definitely, I'll definitely try the, the 92 mags. That'd be interesting if that works. I'm thinking about that. You got a PX4 as well? I do have a PX4. Maybe it might But be I have a subcompact. I have a subcompact. And I, don't, I think those mags are not going to be long enough to to seat properly. Um yeah, I've got this I've got the PX4 subcompact, not the full size. Um I don't know. It's interesting. But I do like the disruptor. I do. I do like the disruptor with very limited experience with it. And I shot it at, at range day, obviously. I've shot about 50 rounds here um, with it. It's a good handgun. Uh, what I will say is, in general, in general, um, it's really hard to beat a Canic trigger stock. So, I mean, yeah, you might be paying a couple hundred dollars more for that Canic. That trigger, trigger is amazing. Um, you know, both are going to have. If, if he's asking, he asked. I think Travis asked specifically, Canic versus the Disruptor. It depends. Like if you've got three hundred bucks, three fifty to spend, then obviously the Disruptor is going to be a great gun. If you've got that five hundred bucks to spend, now you're talking about value versus price. Uh, are you an optic guy? Are you not? Whatever. Uh, but if you and, just put and them head, to, and that is so once that'd be a great video. I, I I could definitely do that. Put my one of my canics up against the disruptor and do a kind of comparison. Uh, that'd be a a pretty pretty good video. Actually, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I was that. just gonna say, let's not forget we're getting that sweet Cerakote job with the disruptor too. So and it is a sweet Cerakote job, um, for sure. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I, I prefer the OD green, but I'm, I'm a big OD green guy. But that black, that black camo is pretty tight. Um, other option is to go to the dagger full size and have Glock mag. I'm not a dagger fan. I would never go to a dagger. That's, that's just me. I can't I, do that frame. Mm -mm. I hate that frame. Um, you guys are talking about, Travis, if you haven't tried one out, I'm not because he's here, but I think everyone on this panel owns one. And everyone on this panel will tell you it's one of the best handguns the last two years. Uh, if you haven't have tried out the Anderson Kiger, especially the 9C Pro, uh, if you haven't tried out the, the 9C Pro, you'll never shoot your dagger again. I'm just telling you, you'll never shoot your dagger again if you get a, a Kiger. Um, so if you haven't tried that out, for sure, because I think if you take Kyle and you take him out of here, um, everyone on this panel has done videos. And I, I honestly have never met a person that shot the dagger that didn't love that gun. Um, I don't know. Ginger, you have a dagger, don't you? I don't have a dagger. I've got the Kiger. Have you shot a dagger, though? Yeah, I've shot a dagger and a Kiger, and the Kiger's better. Chris, so. what's your experience with a dagger? I don't like the frame. I, I don't. I, don't I, that's, I love the dagger slides. They work great. I... You know, I've got that SW on a different slide. frame. If if you've got uh, a, an aftermarket frame, yeah, yeah, I just but I can't do that dagger frame. It's just yeah. it's it's horrible. It's horrendous. Yeah, Clover, uh, Kiger versus dagger in your experiences. Oh man, that freaking Kiger, hands down. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, the Kiger and, the, and I have a nine C Pro. I think everyone in the room has a nine C Pro, not just a nine C. Um, I think that. I, you know, he said, yeah, Kiger has my attention to watch videos. I'm telling you, like, that is one of the best handguns that's come out in the last couple of years. Like, there is no doubt about that. And that's not because Kyle's here at all. Um, I bought my Kiger and I would buy another one. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, it's, it's a fantastic handgun. I'm not a big dagger guy to begin with. But even if I was, I mean, I've shot the dagger a lot, and it's not even a comparison. That's my opinion. Um, it's not even close 
in my opinion. So even yeah. the original Kiger was fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I just, I, I like the the, the pro. Um, for me, the pro just the weight of it, and it's probably there's probably really not a big difference between yeah the the barrel and, and, and the slide or got some little differences and all that, but it's same dimensions and all that. But I'm just telling you, man, for something about that, um, it's 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 not it's in my books, it's not even close between the dagger and the kiger uh what is springfield's uh version of their little what do you think what is that thing called echelon the echelon oh the echelon's fantastic but is it's it? also I, I, I've, I don't i don't think i've ever shot an echelon so i know i know you've got one don't you Alan? i've got one and i did a review on it i love the echelon and it's, yeah. it's mostly because it not only does the thing shoot fantastic but it also the optic system is Head and above everybody else's. Sorry, Kyle, but it is. It's just the way to to be able to swap multiple optics without having to use plates. It's just yeah easy. Um, but yeah, the echelon. I've it's sitting right here. It's so of the three, there. you would say that the dagger is in last of the 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 dagger, the Kiger, and the echelon. The dagger is coming in last. In your experiences, or I have to be careful what I say. Yes, though, is it fully loaded reviews? As fully loaded reviews, I will say that the it goes the echelon. The echelon is it, for me. It goes echelon. It's a close tie between the Kiger and the Ross Martin. I like both of them. I'll see. I don't have any experience with the Ross yeah. Martin at all. I have no, close, zero experience with it. It's a close tie between both of them. I think the the Kiger squeaks out slightly because of the interchangeable with the cheap Glock mags, and then it yep. goes to the dagger. Yeah. Um, Chris Clover, your experiences with the Echelon or the Ross Martins, where where do they kind of fill in this this the Clone Wars, if you will, you know? I just got my hands on the Echelon Saturday for the first time. I've never shot one, and yeah. I it's actually pretty sweet. And I'm not a Springfield guy, but yeah, that right Echelon's here. pretty cool. But yeah, now, as far as Ross Martin goes, I love it. But I think we're kind of talking about a completely different gun. I mean, it is, it's, the Ross it's, Martin's it's a more of a it's, concealed carry type gun. Yeah, it's 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 a different it's a different thing. But you know, Ginger brought it up, so I did. I and I, I never shot it. I I did not. Um, I didn't have time to go meet with them at shot. I've never, I mean, I've seen pictures of what you guys, I've never seen one in person. I've never shot one. So that's what it is. Um, echelon, I, I've got limited experience in shooting the echelon. Um, you know, I say I'm not usually a Springfield guy, but I'm a huge XD guy. I, I, I really respect the old XD. I've got an XD nine. that's still one of my favorite handguns. Um, I love the Ronin, uh, 10 millimeter. I, I think that's probably the prettiest gun I own. Um, but I, 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 I don't in general, I'm not, I'm not a huge Springfield guy, but I, I I'm not anti Springfield because I do. I, is most people going to shit on me? I, I'm, I'm a fan of the XD line. Uh, I like the XD. You may laugh at me and all that, but I, I appreciate the XD for what it was. Um, is it because you need to know where to grip it? No, it was just for some reason. I, 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 and I, I get what you're saying. I mean, I, I haven't. I, I just, I had an XD when it first came out, uh, the XD9 when it came out, and I've always just liked the feel of it. I've always just enjoyed that gun. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not a Springfield guy by any means, but I do, I do appreciate the XD. Um. What's funny about the Kiger is you could give it a 10 barrel finish, slap agency arms on the side, and charge twice as more. There you go. Um, Steve, what's up, Steve? Mr. Big Kids out there says, I like the XDM elites. Yeah, I mean, like, we can sit there and say that Springfield over the years have may have had some questionable decisions politically. We could say that they've made some questionable decisions on guns. But to sit there and say they've never produced anything, I think people are naive to think they haven't produced good guns uh, in the past. Uh, they still have some good guns. Um, 
Yeah, and she was. I tend to remember when company funds anti bills in a state that don't need. I, I get it, and I'm not saying that you should go and like Springfield, but I think that you have to separate a couple different things here. I think you have to separate the politics from the quality of handguns. I think you have to separate uh, the quality of handguns versus whoring them out to every YouTuber that wants one. Let's just be honest. They're the O lights of handguns. They'll give anyone, which is a marketing, that's their marketing strategy. They want as many people out there with them. I have no problem with that. A lot of people say, well, I don't like Springfield because they'll send anybody a gun. Well, that's that's their decision. Hey, at least um, at least Springfields won't burn your house down. This is true. That we know of. That we know of. As of oh, yet. Valid. Uh, yeah, so valid. I mean you, you can take Springfield for what it's for what it is and what it's done in the past. Um, for people that are Springfield, I mean not Springfield, but Smith and Wesson fans, maybe they don't remember that 40 years ago they were as maybe as anti two way as you could get for a gun company. People tend to forget stuff like that, but I think every company has done some stuff over the years that you would question. Uh, I'm talking about gun quality, and I'm saying that there are some Springfield guns that I enjoy, um, and especially if you can find them in a used market, so you're not directly supporting companies that have ethically strange beliefs to a politically. Um, it's fine. Go ahead. I'm going to say this, and it's because I know the guys over at Springfield. Right, yeah, pretty, you're pretty much well. closer to Springfield than yeah. I am, for sure. Everybody who was involved in that scandal has been fired. Right. They are all gone. Um, and I will say this, is it, you're not supporting Springfield directly. You're supporting the – because they don't sell direct. Springfield sells to distributors who then sell to the shops. And yeah, if you go shop. buy a Springfield new, you're not paying Springfield. They're not getting no. your money. They've already got their money. But you're by boycotting Springfield back in the day, and I, and I was, I was blatantly open about this, and I think Clover was there too. Um, you can dislike anything that Springfield did politically, but boycotting Springfield is stupid. They've already been paid for the guns. All you're doing is hurting the guy on the assembly line because they might lose a job. The guy that made the decision up in the boardroom to do all that bullshit, he ain't losing his job. You know? They ain't going to lose their job anyway because, like John said, it's a distributor model, right? This is true. So the distributors have done bought millions of dollars of, of yeah, products. Yes, Springfield's been paid in a year dealers, for all those Dealers guns. have then turned around and bought millions. So when you say, hey, I'm not buying this particular brand no more, that stuff sits on the shelves at the local gun shops. And or it's at only hurting the local level. gun shop. And it yep. hurts them, and before too long, if that continues to happen, and if that happens to <laughs> multiple brands, <laughs> you get gun shops, you get distributors, Closing and down. business. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So, and, and that's just a, that's just a dirty fact. I'm not yep. arguing it one way or the other. No, I'm not saying like Springfield, dislike. I'm saying yeah. before you say that you can't stand Springfield or you whatever, let's just lay it all out in the line. You know, why? what are the reasons that you don't like company XYZ? It could be Canik. It could be Anderson. It could be, you know, Gerson. It could be whatever company you like. I don't like them. What don't you like about them? And let's talk about those things because it may not be that you don't like them. It just may you don't like something that they have done or whatever. Whatever. Uh, go ahead, John. Well, the other thing is, and people complain about Springfield's marketing and the, the mass uh, sending of products to, to YouTubers and, and things like that for reviews. And somebody asked me the other day, said, who's doing the best marketing in the firearm space? And I said, it's Springfield. Springfield. They're no, the, no, no, no. Yeah, like it or not, they are doing pretty damn good. They're well, great they're, at launches for that reason, you know. Well, they're the only ones that I know of, and somebody can tell me I'm wrong in the comments and things like that, but they're the only ones I know of who have Clover guns. Will. Yeah, Clover will, that's fine. But they're also the only ones who have guns in view, reviewers' hands day of launch. They also are the only ones who have guns at the FFL's day of launch. They're the only ones who have all this hype, and in a world of instant gratification that we live in right now, they are the ones who are satisfying everybody's instant gratification by having everything 
at launch at the shops, ready to go. The minute the the gun gets announced, the FFL dealers have them, and if they don't have them, they can order them, and they're yeah. already there within a couple days, which if you look at a lot of people are still using the old school marketing ways in the firearms industry, it's like, Hey, we launch a product at shot show. And then by third like quarter, August, they're right. out, you know? Yeah. But you can't do that. Cause now you lose a whole bunch of hype that you spent all this marketing dollars on. Mm-hmm. Why not launch a product and have it ready at the dealers the minute it comes out. And I applaud them for that just because a lot of people are like, well, it's ridiculous. I'm tired of getting flooded with Springfield, but it works for them. They're selling so many because it's all about yep. instant gratification with this with our t- society today. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, for sure. And, 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 and as marketing as a whole, I will not go out there and say they are doing the best. I will say they're hands down the best at launches. Um, hands, I, I don't think it's even close um with launches go they, they are fantastic with launches for sure um yeah there you go um anything else we want to talk about or we went well it's almost been t- 10 till two hours holy shit uh for i, I told clover i said i don't even know if i'm gonna do a show i'm so tired if i do i might just go for an hour and once again we're gonna we've gone two hours but this has been a fun one bit of fun one uh you know it's fun how when we don't have a specific topic where the natural discussion takes us uh i love those i love those things uh chris want to bring you in real quick and and let you talk about uh videos you got coming up the podcast um i don't know do you call it the podcast do you call it your, your a show don't you you don't call it the 740 you call it the 740 show yeah anyways yeah, we whatever. are doing one this thursday night okay nice i got a got a buddy of mine sacrificial science i've been trying to get him on the show for a long time so uh he's going to come on and hang out with us thursday that should be fun um as far as videos coming up i got so much i'm buried under stuff right now so um i I got the front line 16 completely finished i got the light on it i got all my ambi controls on it now so it's ready to go um obviously got the disruptor um (sighs) Shooting got up with the wrong hand again. You got yeah. you know, all your and <laughs> shit. I got <laughs> boxes of monstrum stuff I'm trying to get through right now. So yeah, I got a lot coming up. So I've got I appreciate you having me on the night. Products this here that I've got to get on. Um, I've got the Banshee on the um, front line ten and a half quad rail. Uh, I'm gonna throw whatever this is called the Arc Saber light on that as well. Um, I think you're gonna like that one. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it, it reminds me of a, a streamlight, which I'm a streamlight guy. So, um, yeah, good. Um, Thursday at eight Eastern. Yep. Eastern, correct. Yep. All right. Uh, thanks for coming on, buddy. Hey, thank you, Kyle. What's going yes, on with sir. you? You want to kind of talk about Anderson real quick and what people can, uh, where they can find you guys and all the awesome shit that you guys have out right now is unbelievable. I tell yeah. you what, Anderson's had a pretty damn good couple of years, man. You've had a really damn good couple of years. Oh, yeah. We we hope to keep that going too, Ghost. Oh, uh, yeah. I know some of your future plans, and you are. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to keep oh, it yeah. going. Big things coming. Uh Head on over to AndersonManufacturing.com. We talked a little bit about the blog earlier. Check that out for sure. Um, like I said, we're kind of going on an adventure with yours truly. Uh, building some rifles, building the Kyger. So um, if you're into that type of stuff or you just kind of want to kind of curious about it, check the blog out. Um, get you in there. Um, other sure. than that, check out the Frontline series. Um, you can find us on all the social platforms at anderson manufacturing uh besides x where it's at anderson rifles um one thing that yeah one thing that i wanted to throw out there in the beginning but i completely forgot and i've been Uh kidding myself the whole show uh yesterday was medal of honor day so i want to give a shout out to any uh medal of honor recipients or families out there um and my favorite the home born kentucky boy Dakota Meyer, Semper Fi. Semper Fi. Um, 
Born, raised Kentucky, lives in Texas now. Can't get much better than that, right? You He's know? living the dream. He is living the dream. Um, one of the things, uh, and I'm glad you brought Medal of Honor Day. Uh, one of the things we talked about Morgan Cottrell, who is Marcus Cottrell's brother, former SEAL himself, uh, and is a U.S. congressman now from Texas. Uh, kind of over in your area, um, Clover, I want to say he's somewhere over in, in, in your area. Um, I'm not sure which district and all of that. Anyways, one of the things that he's on, um, he, he might be like the one of the subcommittee chairs for the VA. Um, he does a lot of Homeland Security um, committees and the VA stuff. One of the things that he is trying to get passed is a federal law that any and all Medal of Honor winners, uh, should they choose not to be buried in, uh, which they have the right as Medal of Honor, uh, they have the right to be buried in Arlington National Cemetery. But if they choose not to, um, they will still get the exact same headstone that they would have at Arlington somewhere else that has the medal of honor insignia on there and all that uh they'll still get the exact same one wherever they choose to have that which i think would be pretty badass um so um but yeah let's get good check out that podcast it's pretty badass uh picture coming on kyle appreciate you bro uh, Thanks for having me on. oh real quick um so um last week i do want to send congratulations out you guys have, have heard and, and clover's met them uh, but you guys have heard about uh, my buddies, uh, Josh and and Danny and all of them, part of the MARSOC 3. Um, they were cleared um, of any wrongdoing except for an alcohol charge, which is bullshit. But they were cleared of any manslaughter, murder, assault charges. They were cleared of that, found not guilty. Um, thank you for everyone that um, that maybe have helped out through the years. I've, I've had videos with a donation thing, trying to help raise some funds for their defense. If you ever did any of that, fantastic. We did some fundraisers here over the years to send money. Thank you for anyone that helped that. Um, so if, if you're not familiar with job designations and, and the numerical configurations of Marine Corps jobs, so at 03 is, is an infantry person. But if you were a special operations or MARSOC, if you're a special operations, uh, you're being 0321. If you were a special operations communications, whatever that is, 21. If you were a, a special operations intel, it would be, you know, like an 01 or, or you know, 0221. Uh, 21 was a designation for special operations or MARSOC or whatever. Uh, Josh retired last week on 0321. Uh, he chose his retirement date on on Marsoc day, uh, which is 0321. So congratulations to Josh, um, retired 20 plus years in the Marine Corps tip of the spear guy. Um, Clover got to meet Josh and he's a fantastic human being now that he's retired and no longer active. Uh, I'm looking forward to get him on the jarhead podcast and talk a lot about all that stuff, which he couldn't do while at one, while the trial was going on, but two, I was active he can do that now, but uh, yeah, congrats, Josh. Uh, Danny retired uh, late last year, um, but Josh is now retired. I, I think it's really, really, really cool that he decided to retire in 0321, March 21st. So, uh, congrats, Josh. You'll be seeing some some stuff from Josh uh, here coming pretty soon. I'm going to have him on and um, and all that. Um, real quick, Chris, did you go to the gathering? No, I didn't go. No, Kyle, you didn't go, did you? So, John, were the only one that went to... Did you go and see Ron over at Riker? <clears throat> I meant to stop by, but he was actually on my flight out. So, I didn't, oh, I nice. didn't get okay. to stop and say hi to him. Well, I'm wondering if Josh was there with him. I was saying you might have been able to meet Josh. He, he helps sometimes with Green Wolf and with Riker at some of those events. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, anyways. Doesn't mean anything, but congratulations to Josh. Uh, retired after all the bullshit you went through the Marine Corps. It's all good now, brother. Uh, Clove, we'll bring you in, or actually, let's let's bring in Ginger real quick. Uh, talk about fully loaded reviews. I know you got, got some videos that just dropped, um, some stuff coming up, and then also take some time to talk about the GOA as well. 
Yeah, so fully loaded reviews. We've got a couple videos in the pipeline that are going to get ready to drop. So one of them is the Ross Martin. Another one's the Kyger uh, 9C Pro. So that video is getting edited now as well. We've got the Arex Delta M, a bunch of other videos. So stay tuned to those coming up sh shortly. Um, I'm hoping they have the Ross Do Martin. Video doing an A Rex Delta and a Ross Martin comparison video because they're kind of similar, aren't they? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm going to see how many people ask for it, but yes, that's going to be on I'm the asking top of for it. So, yeah. Uh, Best I top love of my A Rex. Yeah. So I'll tell you a little bit. Uh, I had a phone call with Kat last week. I'll tell you a little bit behind after chat about <laughs> what we talked about. Um, so yeah, those are coming up. And then for GOA, uh, Stay the Second Podcast with Kill Flash Photography is dropping tomorrow uh, on the Stay of the Second Podcast channel. So it's a brand new channel. Go over there, watch that. There's also the episode with Ari. Stay of the Second spelled out, correct? All spelled out, yes. Stay yeah. of the Second Podcast is all spelled out. You're better. I, I think they're fixing it now because it's such a new channel. The searchability is kind of hard. You're better off typing in uh, Stay of the Second uh, PWS. So that's our episode with Ari, uh, who was previously at Arrow and Rainier. He tells his life story. Uh, I knew him. A, it, it, no, you go ahead. Sorry. It's a great tear jerker. If you if you want to, sorry, if you want to get a little sad, Ari's story is fantastic. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It really yeah. is. It's crazy. Yeah, so go check out that episode. It's live on the State of the Second uh, podcast channel. Um, so go ahead and go check that out. Go subscribe to the new channel. Uh, we've got a ton of cool uh, more interviews coming up with uh, Otter Waver. Uh, the owner of Dead Air himself is going to be on an episode. I've also got John Level, Liberty at All. Um, the owner of Watchtower is going to be on. And there's going to be a behind-the-scenes tour of the uh, PSA rifle manufacturing. So if you want to know what goes on behind the scenes at PSA, this is the video to watch. We're one of the first people to get a full tour and video with them at that facility. So it's uh, it's going to be great. And then don't forget to go to goals.gunowners.org for the new GOA convention coming up in August in Knoxville, Tennessee. Those dates are August 17th and 18th. Uh, pre-registration for it will be available, I'm uh, being told, the first week of April. It's, so they're working on the back end of the site now, making sure, testing everything, making sure it's all good. So you'll be able to register both as media, uh, again, uh, all the guys who've already submitted their media requests, that'll all get dropped in there automatically. So you oh, know, we, guys we do it because I'm not that smart. Yeah. You won't have to redo it, so we'll get sent out an email with that information, and then also vendors' information will get automatically put in there too, as well. General as public, uh, it's general open public. to any and all GOA members. Any, uh, all if GOA you're not a GOA member, sign up. Sign up, and you can go. Yeah, it'll be open to all can GOA members. Up to the door in, in Knoxville without being a member, and, and maybe join or pay a, an entry at that yep. time. It'll be twenty dollars at the door. So go ahead and just Which uh, is do basically that. what it is to be a yearly yeah. member. <laughs> yep. Just sign up at the door. We we highly recommend due to the crowds we're expecting that website the yeah. original website got hit uh got a hundred hundred thousand hits in the first two days. So uh, we highly recommend that if you are going to come, sign up early, sign up often, get in the hotel rooms that we've mm. booked. There's a bunch of hotels right next to the convention center that we've already pre-booked and told them that we've got this going on. So that's great. The great city of Knoxville has really been very helpful, uh, specifically Glenn Jacobs. If you guys don't know who Glenn Jacobs is, he's going to be there, and he's Kane. So if you watch he's the, 90s he's the, Yeah, he's the uh, wrestler, right? Yep. Kane yep. the wrestler's going to be there. So He actually um, went, went to bat with for you guys um, a couple different times. That's pretty cool. Yes, he's a good big supporter of ours. So go check him out um, uh, at the convention center. There's going to be some cool announcements. Great panels going to be happening. Tons of great companies. Smith & Wesson just signed up too. So hopefully we get Anderson to follow up shortly here. Sorry, Kyle. I got to poke at you a little bit. Hey, we we'll, we will. Yeah, Global Ordnance is going to be there. SDS Imports, EAA is going to be there. I've got a ton of great companies. Just those are the ones off the top of the head that 
I've worked with. They're all friends of all of ours. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a great event. Um, I I even talked to the guy from Ballistic Dummy Labs. He's going to be there. And uh, for the media, there's going to be some fun stuff at Range Day for the media to blow up from him. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to be a great event. Make sure to sign up early, get your hotel rooms booked. If you don't get a hotel room booked, there are plenty of Airbnbs all around this great city of Knoxville. Just get in early and get those booked because uh, I'm showing up to Kaylee's house and say, Hey, I was told that I could stay here. John told me I could stay with you. You Um, know, that will have to be worked out with you and Kaylee. I'm no, no, I'm I'm still gonna tell her that you said that I had a place to stay at her house. So I'm putting it on the record right now. I did not say that. And if Kaylee's watching, I did not say that. So, no, it's gonna be a good time. We're super excited about it. It's gonna be the first annual convention, it's gonna be held in Knoxville for at least the first two years. So, make sure that you uh, get in and go hang out and. Uh, yeah, yes, all local the- YouTubers. I'm a I mean, local, I, I, I would still consider Steve to be like an eastern Tennessee person. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Opie will probably be there. I'm sure Johnny will be there. Um, a lot of the east Tennessee guys, the east Tennessee mafia will probably all be there. I'm assuming yep. Johnny, Jared. Um, oh, I forgot Opie, Jared's there too. Yeah, Black Diamond Boys, big uh, Steve. Uh, we're working on uh. Plinkster said he's probably going to be there. We're reaching out to Hickok's going to be there. Uh, Patton's going to be there. Um, you guys are going to be there. That's the big deal. I mean, Clover's going to be there. He's a huge Clover's deal. Clover's going to be there. I mean, that's you that's... get to meet Clover in person. Um, oh, I'm only a huge deal in Turkey. Let's get that. Oh, straight. I'm sorry. East Tennessee Turkey. You know, <laughs> uh, who else to go? Sarge, uh, Snob, all those guys are going to be Don't there. Don't because so- people won't go at that point well i'm sorry you know i gotta save some of the youtubers but yeah there's gonna be uh one more michael be there um, uh, mr guns and gear will be there um is mark has mark reached out from fit and fire no not yet i gotta talk to mark Um, i think he said he was going to uh, he he texted me about it earlier and i I asked him if he was going he goes oh yeah i need to reach out to to john i was like okay yeah oh and more importantly armenthia will be there Armenthia is good. Armenthia is like the greatest thing to ever happen. I am gonna. Why give the hell she's the with Clover? I I don't. I understand don't know. It. She sent me and I, I Clover and her both. I have to give Clover pops. They sent me three bags of Beaver Nuggets. Now, I just Bucky's. mailed them. She's the one that bought them and said you got to send to John. All I did was put them in a box and mail them, bro. So. I I said something in Dallas like, oh, I don't, I can't go to Bucky's this time. I really want Beaver Nuggets, and they showed up at the house, and the wife is happy, and she says thank you as well to both of you. So I really appreciate that from the both of you. Good people all around. Uh, but yeah, there's a, we're working with Patton to uh, have it. There's going to be a YouTube YouTuber panel up there. There's going to be veteran talks with uh, Trey on there. Um, we're talking with a, a it's bunch Kyle, of, as know. Kyle might be on that one too. Also, yeah, right? Kyle, I, yeah, I'm saying Kyle, Kyle better be up there. He's, I'm going to try to steal him away from the booth. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, really, yeah, he, all sorts of, of, of cool different panels. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be on a, on, a, on a veteran and I'm not even really sure what it's about, but I think I'll be with, with Mike, uh, with guns and gear and, uh, um, we're still, we're won't... still nailing those guys down. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it'll be pretty cool talking about veterans and, and firearms and all of that. That'd be kind of cool. Like you said, they've got some really cool, a lot of different uh, panels about a lot of different topics. So I think it's pretty yeah. pretty cool what you guys are doing. If you can pull this off, which I know you can, I'm just saying, like in your first year, if you can pull it off the way that you want to, um, it's going to change a lot of shit, man. Listen, I learned a long time ago that as long as the vendors, the media, and the people are happy, it could be a total shit show behind the scenes, but it is yeah. good, to, good to go. Like, I have, if you guys ever wanted to get into state and local affairs and learn about that, that is going to be a whole panel. So it's going to be yeah. a great, great time. Um, I don't know, Scott. You're going to see, but what the hell? I'm going to ask the same question because I'm interested. What the hell are beaver nuggets? Obviously, Bucky. this is a Bucky's thing, but like, what is it? They're like, like jerky corn, or, or they're what? Like corn pops. They're like uh, caramel coated corn pops. Oh, okay. So like, I, 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 don't so bigger, I, I don't know. Bigger, yeah. but yeah. Bigger, corn yeah. Pop. yeah. 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 I when I hear beaver nuggets, that's not something that I think sounds a little very bit good. different flavor profile. More. I would hope so. 
More of a caramel flavor profile, yeah. I guess. They're delicious. That's all you need to know. And Scott, if you well, they've got I'm different not... kind though. They've got the cheddar cheese now, and they've got. No. Like, I just didn't know what in general what they were. I, I I have no. I've been to one Bucky's in my yeah. life, and Buffy. that was when we came back from yeah. uh, the gathering there in Alabama and puffed, uh, puffed corn uh, treat or snack. Okay. Or something okay. Something okay. If Scott is well, in... kettle corn would be in the same kind of a thing. No. Or no. No, no, no okay. pop totally corn. Puffed that. corn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. Ooh, I, like puff, I, I like puff corn stuff. I know Scott's down in Tucson, but we're going to be getting a Bucky's in, in Buckeye. So if you really want to try them, you can go up to Buckeye. I think he's getting Buckeye. ready to move to Texas eventually, though, yeah. which is hilarious. Now, G Web says you already have a Bucky's in, in Arizona. If in I let Buket. him come in. It's going to but it's going to be in Buckeyes. They they just announced it. It should be open shortly. Oh, Buckeye. Okay. Yeah. Um, he said Bouquet earlier, and I was reading it, but uh, Buckeye. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't think we have a Bucky's here in Arkansas. Yeah, I might be wrong about that, but I don't. I don't think we do. They're everywhere. So. I don't know. We're in Arkansas, bro. We just now got a Waterburger. So just saying. we just got Bojangles. So. Bojangles is not bad. It's not bad. Not awesome, but not bad. Uh, Clove, what about you? What you got going on? Yeah. Uh, you've recorded all the podcasts at this point. Now they haven't released yet, but you are you done recording yet? Recording and have you done. and have you like destroyed uh, your living room with all the three D printed shit that you're doing? Oh man, I got a <laughs> trash can full of just like scrap, like scrap throwaways, yeah. um, misprints or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Now there's what four, four episodes left to drop. Uh, yeah, but you've recorded been, all of them, yeah, correct? Everything's yeah. been recorded. We recorded with uh, Rob this last Friday. That was the last one. Um, four more to drop. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, been working the the blog. So check the uh, community tab on that. The uh, Strybog Twenty Two. I got a blog post. The most recent. I was on it. Yeah, you did something pretty cool the last cool couple stuff. days. Made you drop a little blog. Was that post yesterday? On, uh, did it finish or was it the day before? It was today. yesterday, wasn't it? I got it finished today. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But actually uh, finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to. I, mean, I, I had hadn't to, slept in a couple days. So. Oh, I had a lot of. I had it. When you seen it, I was just. I was test fitting and all. And then yeah. I had to go to town this morning and I had to pick up a bunch of stuff. I had to. Um, I had to do a lot of work and filler and painting and stuff like that to get it to where it looked good yeah you know? so you're done with it it's it's uh it's, yeah, 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 there's, there's, yeah there's pictures and everything's in there i sent you pictures. okay oh did you i don't i don't remember <laughs> okay you got pictures you're, you're sleeping you're like, I um, I'm, and then I uh no idea so i've been doing with that i doing that because uh working on um you know getting back into the swing with uh rain 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 lately but uh, I got tons of stuff here, like uh, everybody else has said, that needs to get worked with and, and things done. Um, and then uh, Scott out there had asked about GunCon. Uh, early, early, early in the chat, he had asked, was anybody going to GunCon? And I will be going to GunCon, Scott, so I'll be there. I will not be Just in Just so Con. you know. John, Chris, Kyle, GunCon? Happening for you guys? Yeah, I'm gone. There you go. I will be there as well. Not going to happen for us this year. When is Gun Con? That's in June, right? June 28th, 29th. Yeah. Well, while they're having fun at Gun Con, I might come to Cincinnati and, and we go to a, a weekend series. What do you say, Kyle? Only we've if you talking, we've, we've been talking about that, going to a, a Reds, a, a, a couple of Reds games. I go up there for a weekend or so and go to a couple of Reds games with Kyle. While all you guys are having fun at GunCon, we might just go to some ball games. Kyle, as long as you take him to Skyline and uh, Blue Ash, that's the only way that's happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, we got to take you wherever he wants. Does it mean that I'm going to eat shit? We got to do a taste testing tour of Cincinnati. <laughs> Hey, you, got the hat. you got the hat. Yeah, it's a Reds hat, not a Cincinnati Chili's hat. It's a Cincinnati Reds hat. You know who one of the biggest sponsors of the Cincinnati Reds are? 
shitty chili. <laughs> yes, that's what fuels the Reds, man. Yeah. Well, it hasn't been fueling for about thirty years, homie. Uh, <laughs> this year might be different, though. I really want Vato to ha- just, you know, I, I really want Joey to, you know. Send guys been. Bags. I mean, well, I mean, here's the thing: like that dude could have left Cincinnati ten years ago to go anywhere in the major leagues for whatever he wanted to make. And he was always faithful to the Reds. Yeah. Uh, I really hope we keep Ellie De La Cruz. I'm hoping that we're able to keep him. I think that dude is a possible hall of famer. Like he's got hall of fame talent. Um, I just hope we can keep him. I hope we, I was going to say historically. It doesn't look good. <laughs> so, like I said, my two favorite teams are the Reds and the Padres. And historically, they have been farm clubs for like the Padres have been the farm club for the Dodgers for years. Like any good player that ever played in the Padres, like ended up in the Dodgers or the Giants. And that's just the way it goes. Um, yes, I'm aware. Vado's first at bat as a Blue Jay, he hit a bomb. I, I'm aware. Uh, and I'll never, you'll never, ever hear me talk bad about Joey Vato. Never. Uh, I'm happy. I mean, and, and the Blue Jays, they're they're probably going to win the AL East this year. Like 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 they're legit, right? They got a chance of doing something special. I'm never going. You'll never hear me a, a say a bad word about Vato. That dude deserves all the success because he could have left years ago and made a lot more money and probably got himself a few rings by now. Um. Um. But yeah, we were talking about Kyle. I've, I, the, I mean, I used to go to Reds games all the time. Is it growing up? I've never been to Great American. And the last game I went to was at Riverfront, which kind of dates me. Um, but yeah, I gotta get up there. We'll go, we'll go to Great American and uh, go to a couple of games and eat shitty chili. You know, uh, that's what it is. It is. As far as us, uh, yeah. What's up? What's up? It's oh, just said, rude. Yeah, it was very. Rude. Yeah, you know they wanted eight dollars for a Coney at the spring training game. It was ridiculous. Wow, that's yeah. not that bad actually. I mean, things considered, for a for a skyline Coney that normally is what a buck fifty is ridiculous. Yeah, and they're only like they're not. Big. Oh, okay. Well, see, I don't know what you're talking about. So yeah, if they're like, well, I mean. That's about what nine inches. That's what I've been saying for years, right? That's about nine oh. inches. He took it there. <laughs> More like wow, wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, if it's like a three-inch dog for eight bucks, and that's that's kind of crazy, but um, that's what it is. They got to make money somehow, right? Um, as far as us, yeah, we've got uh, some. Yeah, we got a couple videos that dropped the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not even sure which one's dropping this week. It's probably a light video, a stream light video. I don't remember. Something's dropping Friday or Saturday. Uh, I honestly don't know. I know where I am, um, but I don't know anything else. I'm so tired. So thanks for like listening to me ramble on tonight. I'm surprised I made it this long. Uh, thanks for my homies um, joining in tonight. Um, hot dog sandwich. Hot dogs are not a sandwich, and Slim Jims are not candy bars. So uh, it's good to have Midnight Range TM, even though he has a demented weirdness thing about food. He thinks the hot dogs are sandwiches, and Slim Jims are candy bars. So, whatever. Welcome back, homie. Um, yeah, that's all. I I, I can't even. I, I can't even. Redbirds. Honestly, I love you, but if you even bring up the Cardinals in this room again, um, we're going to have issues. Um, we're going to have issues. Like, you can bring up the Bucks and, and be okay with the Pirates before you bring up the Cardinals. See, I grew up two fans, Reds and Cubs. My grandfather was from Indiana. He was a diehard Cub fan. So I always thought, you know, if if the Reds aren't going to win the division, then I want the Cubs. It was basically... Even the, the the Pirates, you know, as long as the Cardinals don't win the division, I'm happy. The funny thing is, is this year, there's a legitimate chance the Cardinals might come in last in our division, which would be amazing because there's nothing better than a pissed off Cardinal fan. Um, yeah, anyways, 
Opening days and Thursday, opening two days. If you're a baseball fan, opening day is a big day. Uh, the Reds, the oldest organization in Major League Baseball, you know, they used to have the Reds be opening day and they'd be the only game on opening day back in the day. Like if, if opening day was Thursday, they would let the Reds play on Wednesday and they'd be the only game that day because they were the oldest franchise or oldest team. They don't do that anymore. I wish they would. That'd be kind of cool. Um, yeah, if you're a baseball fan, opening day, Thursday. Have at it. Greatest game in the world, my opinion. So, all right, guys, get to the range. Be more proficient with your firearms. Stay in tune with what's going on both locally and state and federal with your 2A legislation, also with your elected representatives. If they're not going the way you want to, 2024 is an election year, so we can make that shit change real quick. Most importantly, just get to the range and enjoy your freedoms of being an American, one of which is to keep and bear arms. We'll see you next week. Semper Fi.